Good morning, everybody. This is Donald Palm Doll Hall of Fame veteran sports cards and collectibles coming to you live from our ladies watching it. Did I say that fast enough like a commercial? Cards in my car with our Posada. Hello, Don. Hope you are having a good morning. And Kevin's car collecting and more says, Good morning. We'll wait until we click over. It looks like we might have two free entries into our live stream today cards in my car with our posada let me get your entry in roberto is in the house how you doing roberto you weren't here yesterday but maybe your ears were ringing somebody in the channel was talking about you robert <laughs> let me get kevin and Cards in my car with our Posada. Let me get you both into my free giveaway for the month of October. Okay, I got both of you all in here. Got the free entries into my October drawing. Let me save the file. We are be going to do our regularly scheduled programming this week. Except for Saturday, we're going to have just a slight change. But I will go over everything in this preview time frame here for those that are regulars in the channel. So today we are doing, of course, the 2011 Topps Baseball Card Set Previewing. Plus, we will have our family mail call left behind times part 7 of 13 parts to finish off his repack box that he sent with his packs of cards so that is what our main content is for today and then let me preview as far as what's taking place the rest of the week so tomorrow tomorrow we will have the the lecture series number seven play ball and then on friday we will have and then we'll have uh, left behind times part eight and then on Friday, we will have our Hall of Fame inductees for 1938, which I believe it is uh, only three Hall of Fame inductees. And we will have then Left Behind Times, part number nine. Uh, I was at the VA yesterday, Ghost Town. It was a ghost town in your vet Veterans Administration? That's kind of interesting. All right, and then for Saturday, we will be having, I know I did have a sale the first Saturday of this month, but because there are five Saturdays and the way it falls for November, we most likely will not have a November sale. If we do, I will put out the word later in regards to that. But we will be having our Fall Harvest Scary Sale. So you can look and search for that. And in the description of that video, I discuss and mention everything that's going to take place on Saturday okay for our fall harvest scary sale and you think oh no how can a sale get scary well I think the prices will be the scary part because I guess it's that way a way for me to give back to my supporting community and give you some good bargains on some baseball cards including my silver mystery packs my silver mystery packs I'll be doing just that I, I adjusted my prices on eBay at $24.95 a pack free shipping included in those so you kind of get an idea as to how much I'm selling my silver mystery packs for I will be offering only on um, my channel scary sale on Saturday I will have 13 preview silver packs for $19.95 but that'll include the $5 flat shipping fee for anything you buy in the sale that day too so still a good deal there so that's what we will be doing Saturday in my scary sale so looking forward to this I went on uh, Jab's family last night and I seen where uh, earlier this summer, he had opened up a 2011 um, Tops update, which he was trying to search for the Trout. The Mike that is this is Mike Trout's rookie year 2011, 
but he was in, until the update series for this year, so we won't be finding a Mike Trout rookie card in the base set. But that is Mike Trout's rookie year, 2011. So other than that, um, we do have this real cool Mickey Mantle card. It's on the top here. I'll go into that when we get ready to open up this box here after our history lesson right at promptly 1030. <laughs> there you go. Cardinals fan puts a ghost up there. It's a scary sale on Saturday. That's right. This is kind of like Halloween week. And, of course, everybody is now depressed because now baseball is done for this year. <laughs> the Los Angeles Dodgers having beaten the uh, Tampa Bay Rays in six games. The Los Angeles Donners, Dodgers won the World Series last night, which is fine for me. They hadn't won in like 28 years, so it's about time the Dodgers had a chance to win a World Series. Uh, nobody was there except hard cases like me. Hurrah. <laughs> At the VA. Um, I haven't been to the VA this year, but um, when things do get rolling along a little bit later, I might just go down and get raided uh, by the VA. I was not able to do that while I was working, but now that I am retired, I might get in there. Um, but it's about an hour's drive for me. Once I'm seen by the main Veterans Administration office, if need be, I can go north from me here, about a half hour's drive to one of their smaller VA uh, facilities that I could probably be seen there once I get into the Veterans Administration system. But until I really need to do that, I think I'm just going to stick with uh, uh, my TRICARE that I have from the military and then when I turn 65 I go on to Medicare and then I switch to TRICARE for life. So that's what will be nice with that part. I guess that is the the way we do get our TRICARE for life is when I turn 65 then I get uh, Medicare, I pay for the Medicare and then after that whatever Medicare don't cover TRICARE for life covers the rest. So that is a, a blessing for veterans, that's for sure. Boo! <laughs> uh, try waiting since 1948. 48? My word. Took you that long to get into the VA there, Robert? <laughs> that's an interesting... Yeah, when I initially went down to just just kind of get on the rolls for the Veterans Administration, they told me when I was working for the post office that I was earning too much money and was not eligible to apply for the, uh, the VA benefits. But I will do that down the road because I did have plenty of things documented in my medical record when I did retire from the military. As far as some of the things I did have problems with, high blood pressure, prediabetes, um, things of that nature. So down the road, I could get a VA rating, which could could give me extra money, but I'm not really pressed upon that for sure. I got my Navy pension. I got my post office pension. I started getting my social insecurity two months ago, uh, well, in September. Yep. So other than that, we've got about five more minutes to chit chat in the channel. Uh, Robert Hone, try waiting since 1940. Oh, 1948 for a pennant. You mean for the for the St. Louis Cardinals? Uh, let me check one more thing here. No, we're good to go there. I have to remember tomorrow when I do my lesson to make sure the sound on my YouTube is totally off. That way I won't have that, that feedback in the background. But other than that, 
everything's going well today looking forward to the stream here going through the the history of the 2011 baseball card set for the 2010 baseball year in review i'm going to try and streamline a little bit because i think some of the streaming is getting too lengthy for the history behind it so i will be streamlining part of the history of the 2010 uh the Cleveland Indians. That's right, not the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cleveland Indians. I keep forgetting you're, you're a Cleveland Indians fan there. All right. <clears throat> Don't worry. We're still waiting here in Seattle. We still haven't had a World Series champion championship. Almost made it to the World Series one year, but the Yankees beat us out. But it was a fun run that year. It was a fun run that year. But other than that, I can't really think of anything else to talk about. We will get into our content at hand in just three more minutes here. Just try and see if we can get... Don't forget, thummies up, thummies up, thummies up for me. Don't forget to give me my thumbs up in the stream. It really, really, really does help. Try and get enough, uh, enough thumbs up in the stream. Starts getting more people watching... Maybe next year, Seattle Mariners. We'll see. I'm not going to hold my breath. But one of these years, we will have a good season and make it to the postseason playoffs. And then all we have to do is keep going to try and get to the end, right? But other than that, it's always fun each and every year. Looking forward to everybody starts out in first place at the very beginning of the season. And then it's just how you play your year and how you keep up with the stats. And how you keep up with first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or you're the bottom of the barrel. Just take it one day at a time when the season does start. So we got two minutes to go, probably less than two minutes to go. And we will get into our year in review. That's for sure. Okay. That's right. At the beginning of the season, we're all tied at the MLB. Everything's reset to 0-0. Zero, zero. No wins, no losses yet. Spring, uh, as we get closer, um, I'll be doing my countdown to spring training. And we will see how things go from there, that's for sure. So, other than that, can't think of much of anything else to talk about. Real close up here. But we'll get ready to get ready to rock and roll here in just about one minute. And we'll get into the 2010 Major League Baseball season. All right. All right. So again, we'll start at 10.30 sharp. We got seven watching and seven thumbs up. That's a perfect match right there. Seven watching and seven thumbs up. And as soon as we hit the magic number of 1030 here, we will get ready to rock and roll. Okay. Hopefully you're having a good Wednesday. I have a windy lunch today. A wind, a windy lunch today, a Wendy's. <laughs> All right, we do have 10:30, so let's get rocking and rolling here. 10,000 or 2010 Major League Baseball season is about to begin. The season began April 4th with the regular season ending on October 3rd. The 2010 All-Star Game was played on July 13th at Angel Stadium of Anaheim in Anaheim, California, and the National League ended a 13-game winless streak with a 3-1 victory. Due to this result, the World Series began October 27th in the city of Na of the National League champion San Francisco Giants and ended November 1st when the Giants defeated the American League champion Texas Rangers four games to one. All right, let me pop 
this here. Oh, wrong way. Let me go back. All right. So without further ado, we're going to skip normally where we go over some of the awards and stuff and get right into the, what I call it, the year in review. So in January, in January, January uh, 2010, January 2nd, the Toronto Blue Jays third baseman Edwin Encarnacion is discharged from a Miami, Florida hospital after suffering first and second degree burns to his face when he gets hit by fireworks during a New Year's celebration in his native La Ramona, Dominican Republic. Encarnacion is treated for minor facial injuries to the front and right side of his face after he is struck by a firecracker near his jaw and it explodes. He goes to a local clinic in the Dominican Republic on the 1st, but is later transported to Miami, where he sees a face specialist for his injuries. On January 4th, the New York Mets announce the official signing of Jason Bay to a four-year, $66 million contract, which includes a fifth-year vesting option. The two sides originally agree on the deal on December 29, 2009. However, it is not official until after Bay passes his physical. On January the 5th, five-time Cy Young Award winner Randy Johnson announces his retirement. Johnson is 303 over 166 losses. Over his 22-year career with a 329 earned run average, his 4,875 career strikeouts are second only to Hall of Famer Nolan Ryan. The St. Louis Cardinals re-signed outfielder Matt Holliday to a seven-year deal with an option for 2017 for a guaranteed $120 million. It is the richest contract in Cardinals history. On January 7th, the Seattle Mariners acquire first baseman Casey Kochman from the Boston Red Sox in exchange for outfielder Bill Hall. On January the 11th, 21-year-old Cuban defector Ardalis Chapman signs with the Cincinnati Reds. In an afternoon statement to the news, Mark McGuire admits that he used steroids during much of his major league career, including the 19 in 1998 when he broke Major League Baseball's single season home run record in the evening he addresses the situation further in an interview with Bob Costas on the MLB network I wish I never came I wish it never came into my life but we're sitting here talking about it I'm sorry that I have to I apologize to everybody at Major League Baseball my family my Marisus Bud C uh, Bud C. League, today was the hardest day of my life. Then on January 16th, the San Diego Padres acquire Scott Hairston and outfielder Aaron Cunningham from the Oakland Athletics for third baseman Kevin Kuzminoff and minor league infielder Eric Sogard. Two days after the Padres reach an agreement with Jerry Hairston Jr. on a one-year deal, the Hairstons become the seventh set of brothers to play for the Padres and the fifth to play as teammates. On January 22nd, the Oakland Athletics farmhand Grant Desme retires after 30-30 2009 season in the minors and being named Arizona Fall League MVP in order to pursue the priesthood. The New York Mets acquire former outfielder Gary Matthews Jr. from the Los Ange Angeles Angels in exchange for reliever Brian Stokes and cash considerations. On January 23rd, Nolan Ryan and Pittsburgh attorney Chuck Greenberg complete the initial step of purchasing controlling interest in the Texas Rangers from Tom Hicks and the Hicks Sports Group. <coughs> <coughs> on uh, January 28th, the Minnesota Twins pitcher Francisco Liriano strikes out 10 batters over five scoreless innings to lead the Linus del Escondido to a 5-3 win over Gigantes del Ciabo for the Dominican Republic League title in the deciding ninth game of the series. The Dominicans become the first squad to qualify for the 2010 Caribbean Series. Then on July 29th in Puerto Rico, Boston Red Sox minor leaguer and Angel Sanchez goes four for six with two runs scored and an RBI to pace 
Indios de Maiguez pass the Carrillos de Cagus 8 to 6 in 11 innings to claim their first league championship since 2005 and a berth in the Caribbean Series tournament. Leones del Caracas cruises past Navigantes del Magallanes 7 to 2 in a decisive game 7 of the Venezuelan Winter League Championship to claim the title and earn a berth in the Caribbean Series. The Venezuelan team is led by the Atlanta Braves outfield fielder Gregor Bianco, who hits 318 with a 538 OBP and a 652 slugging, who is named most valuable player. Then on January 30th in Mexico, the Narian Naraneros the Homicio uh, joins Winter League Championship teams from Venezuela, the Dominican Republic, and Puerto Rico in the double round robin tournament format tournament tournament after edging Venados de Mazatlan one to nothing in Game Seven of the League Championship Series. Juan Del Gadillo uh, pitches seven and two thirds shutout innings. Uh, to outduel San Diego Padres right-hander Walter Silva. Uh, the game's only run scored in the first inning on a Vin- Vinny Castilla sacrifice try after Chris Robertson triples to lead off the game. The six-day Caribbean series is set to begin February 2nd on the Venezuelan island of Margarita. Pop in the chat real quick here. Criterium Racer. Sounds like you still have your fall cold. Hope you feel okay. Oh yeah, I'm I'm doing fine. It's just usually the last tail end of it just kind of lingers and hangs around. It's trying to go through another cycle again. But uh that's why I keep trying to convince my wife we need to move down south somewhere where it's pretty much warm year round. Then I don't have to worry about my fall colds when they do return. But yeah, no, I'm I'm doing okay there, Criterium Racer. Um, it's just the last little tickles and sniffles and sinus plugging and things like that. But other than that, I'm doing good. I'm staying inside, staying warm, staying hydrated, keeping fluids in my body, and just rolling on and going day by day. So let's get on into February here. All right. Excuse me. Let me refresh the chat real quick so I know where I left off. Yes, eat a bacon burger at Wendy's. <laughs> that would make me feel better. All right, February 4th, the Detroit Tigers re signed ace right hand pitcher Justin Verlander to an $80 million five year contract extension. February 7th, the Dominican team Leones. Del Escondido wins the 2010 Caribbean Series. The Dominicans finish the tournament with a 5-1 and one record, while Puerto Rico's My Guess team places second with 4-2, and two, Mexico's Hermosillo squad third, 2-4, two to two and four, and the Venezuelan Caracas Club in last place, one win, five losses. The Dominican outfielder Fernando Martinez earns the Series MVP award and... Uh, Mako Oliveras from Puerto Rico is named the best manager. On February the 8th, the Chicago White Sox unretire Hall of Fame shortstop Luis Arpacio's number, which was worn by Arpacio's friend and fellow Venezuelan Omar Vescal. The Hall of Fame holds a second annual Hall of Fame Classic at Doubleday Field on Father's Day, June 20th. The Hall began a Father's Day weekend last June with five Hall of Famers and more than 20 other former Major Leaguers. The game replaced the annual exhibition game between the Major League teams, which was discontinued because it became too difficult to fit into regular season schedule. This year's seven-inning exhibition game features Hall of Famers Gary Carter, Bob Feller, Raleigh Fingers, Goose Gossage, Herman Killebrew, Phil Negru, and Mike Schmidt. Uh, 
On February the 11th, Tom Glavin retires after 22 major league seasons and accepts a front office job with the Atlanta Braves. The 300-game winner pitched at, at the major league level in 2008 and became eligible for the Hall of Fame in 2014 alongside longtime Brave teammate and fellow 300-game winner Greg Maddox. After sitting out the entire 2009 season, Frank Thomas announces his f official retirement from baseball. February 12th, Tim Lincecum and the San Francisco Giants avoid arbitration and agree to a two-year $23 million deal that takes him through the 2011 season. <clears throat> The Texas Rangers pitching prospects Omar Belt Beltre, 28, and Alexi Ogando, 26, are granted visas and allowed to attend spring training, arriving in the U.S. on the 16th. The two players had previously confessed to involvement in a human trafficking ring in the Dominican Republic in 2004 and had been subsequently banned from entering the United States for five years, limiting them to winter ball, the Dominican summer league, and entered national tournaments. On February the 22nd, Johnny Damon joins the Detroit Tigers signing a one-year $8 million contract. British rugby team player Terry Newton is the first professional athlete suspended for testing positive for human growth hormone. The blood test has been in existence since the 2004 Summer Olympics, but baseball's officials say it its validity is not universally accepted by the scientific community until now. Bud Selig introduces a plan to test minor leaguers for HGH shortly afterwards. <clears throat> February 23rd, Aaron Boone announces his retirement. On February 25th, the Texas Rangers void the contract of off-season acquisition Cali Green, who does not report to spring training due to social anxiety disorder. Green went on the disabled list twice during the 2009 season while with the St. Louis Cardinals due to his disorder. And then finally in February February 26, female pitcher Eri Yoshida, formerly of the Kobe 9 Crews in the Kansai Independent Baseball League in Japan, is drafted by the Chino Outlaws of the Golden Baseball League. She is introduced as a member of the team on May 7th, less than two weeks after graduating from high school and only a few hours after she lands in San Francisco following a flight from Tokyo. She becomes the first woman to play at the professional level in an American baseball league alongside men since Isla Borders and the first to play in professional baseball in two countries. Pop in the chat. Nothing new. Let's continue on with March here. March the 2nd, Major League Baseball's 2K10 video game published by 2K Sports is released for Microsoft Windows, Xbox, 360, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, PlayStation Portable, Wii, and Nintendo DS. The cover features Evan Longoria of the Tampa Bay Rays. On March the 10th, Nomar Garcia Parra signs a one-day contract with the Boston Red Sox and announces his retirement from baseball as a member of his original franchise, <clears throat> at City of Palms Park in Fort Myers, Florida, before the Sox spring training game against the Tampa Bay Rays. Garcia Parra threw, then threw out, one cero, out the ceremonial first pitch to his teammate at both Georgia Tech and with the Red Sox, Jason Veritek. <clears throat> March 11th, outfielder Brian Giles announces his retirement a month after signing a minor league contract with the Los Angeles Dodgers. And then on March 16th, uh, though John Schmaltz has yet to d officially retire, Turner Sports announces that Schmaltz will serve as one of their guest analysts for the national broadcast and will serve the same role for the 45 Atlanta Braves games at uh, Peachtree Television and will broadcast this season. Smaltz also joined MLB Network's on-air roster the same day. Former Major Leaguer infielder Chuck Knobloch pleads guilty to misdemeanor assault on his common-law wife. Knobloch entered his plea in exchange for deferred adju adjudication problem. 
Uh, he was also fined $1,000. On March 17th, the Texas Rangers manager, Ron Washington, calls a press conference apologizing for using and testing positive for cocaine during <clears throat> the first half of the 2009 season. A day later, Washington admits to having smoked marijuana and taken amphetamines during his playing career. On March 18th, Major League Baseball announces that the Florida Marlins and the New York Mets three games set on July, June 28th through June 30th had has been moved from Miami to San, San Juan, Puerto Rico. March 21st, reigning American League MVP Joe Maurer signs an eight-year deal, $184 million contract extension with the Minnesota Twins that will take him through the 2018 season. On March 23rd, Dwight Gooden is charged with driving under the influence of drugs and leaving the scene of a two-vehicle accident around 9 a.m. in Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. Goodwin had a child in his vehicle at the time of the crash. Jose Canseco announces on Twitter that the FBI was about to visit his house and in he had been subpoenaed to appear before a grand jury investigating whether Roger Clemens lied to Congress when he denied using performance-enhancing drugs. March 31st, the Minnesota Twins outfielder Denard Spann hits his mother, Wanda Wilson, in the chest with a foul ball in the top of the first inning of an exhibition game with the New York Yankees at George M. Steinbrenner Field. Paramedics check on Wilson, who declined to go to a local hospital. All right, nothing new in the chat. In April, April 2nd, the Minnesota Twins open their new stadium, Target Field, losing a spring training game against the St. Louis Cardinals 8-4. to April 4th at Fenway Park, the Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees open the 2010 baseball season. Boston comes back from a 5-1 deficit with a 9-7 victory. On April the 5th, the Atlanta Braves rookie Jason Hayward hits a 451-foot home run in the first at-bat of his career. On April 7th, San Francisco Giants outfielder Eugenio Velez enters the seventh inning of the Giants' 10-4 victory over the Houston Astros at Minute Maid Park wearing a jersey with a pair of letters transposed. No one noticed his uniform, red, San Francisco, until after the game had already ended. April 11, 2009, Major League Baseball draft number one pick Steven Strasburg strikes out eight and five innings to earn the win in his professional debut with the Harrisburg Senators. On April the 12th, in the first regular season game at Target Field, the Minnesota Twins defeat the Boston Red Sox 5-2. to two. Carl Pavano earned the first victory and Jason Kubel hits his first home run while Marco Scutaro of the Red Sox got the ballpark's first official hit. A single in the first inning. On April the 14th, Jorge Cantu of the Florida Marlins hits a home run, making him the first player in Major League history to have at least one hit and one RBI in each of his team's first nine games. And the Marlins beat the Cincinnati Reds 5-3. to three. Cantu entered the game with George Kelly of the 1921 New York Giants, and at least one hit an RBI in the opening game, according to Elias Sports Group. All right, on April the 16th, Jorge Cantu's string of collecting at least one hit and one RBI in the Florida Marlins ends at 10 games. His hitting streak, however, reaches an 11th game for in Florida's 8-6 loss to the Philadelphia Phillies at Citizen Bank Park. On April the 17th, the New York Yankees third baseman Alex Rodriguez hits his 50, 584th career home run in a Yankee 7-3 victory over the Texas Rangers at Yankee Stadium. Rodriguez passes Mark McGuire for 8th place on the all-time home run list. At Turner Field, Baldo Jimenez of the Colorado Rockies tosses the first no-hitter in franchise history, defeating the Atlanta Braves 4 to nothing. Jimenez 
also drives in a run, a fourth inning single that cross, uh, scores Brad Hopp uh, to help his own cause. The New York Yankees and the St. Louis Cardinals play 18 innings at Bush Stadium without scoring a run in the 19th inning. <clears throat> the Mets finally score a run on a sacrifice fly by Jeff Francoeur, only to have the Cardinals tie the game in the bottom of the inning on a double by Albert Pujols and an RBI single by Yadier Molina. The Mets score again in the 12th on a sacrifice fly by Jose Reyes to win the game 2-1. to one. The Mets used 24 of the 25 men on their roster. The only player not used is the previous day's starter, Oliver Perez. While the Cardinals used 22 Mets closer, Francisco Rodriguez uh, blows the save, but is credited with the wind. The Mets starter, Mike Pelfrey, earns his first career, and a losing pitcher is Cardinals left fielder Joe Mather. <clears throat> On April the 18th at Nationals Park, the Milwaukee Brewers score 10 runs in the first inning of their 11-7 victory over the Washington Nationals. At the first time in Brewers history, they accomplished such a feat. National starter Jason Marquis allows seven unearned runs on four hits, two hit batters and one walk, and never retires a batter, making him the fifth pitcher since 1969 to allow seven earned runs at home without recording an out, and was the Cincinnati Reds' Paul Wilson in 2005. April the 20th at Fenway Park, uh, Darnell McDonald pinch hits a two-run home run to tie the game in the eighth and walk and a walk-off single in the ninth to push the Boston Red Sox to a 7-6 victory over the Texas Rangers. McDonald also became the first ever member of the Red Sox to collect a game-ending RBI in his debut with the club, according to the Elias Sports Bureau. On April 21st, the Chicago Cubs confirms reports that manager Lou Pinilla is moving struggling starter Carlos Zambrana to, to the bullpen. And a move that may not be temporary, Zambrana is 1-2 and two with a 7.45 ERA and 4 starts. And the move makes room for Ted Lilly, who is returning to the Cubs' starting rotation after going off-season uh, for shoulder surgery. Pinella announced the movement one day after a 4 to nothing loss to the New York Mets, in which Zambrano pitched six innings and gave up two earned runs, while the Cubs' bullpen gave, gave up two bringing the bullpen's ERA to 6.15. On April 22nd at PNC Park, the Milwaukee Brewers pound the Pittsburgh Pirates 20-0. 20 runs to zero. <laughs> wow. For the largest margin of defeat in the Pirates' 124-year history among the Brewers' 25 hits are home runs by Prince Fielder, Ryan Braun, George Colataris and Jim Edmonds. The New York Yankees turned the first triple play of the season and the first one in franchise history since 1968 in a 4-2 loss to the Oakland Athletics. April 24th, Ted Lilly pitches six shutout innings in his season debut. Carlos Zambrano made his first appearance out of the bullpen in almost eight years and the Chicago Cubs beat the Milwaukee Brewers 5-1 to one at Miller Park. Lilly uh, struck out four and walked two after being activated from the 15-day disabled list before the game. He was out while recovering from less shoulder injury in November. Zambrano gave up a run and one and one-third innings and a sacrifice fly in Chicago. Chicago's three-run eighth. On April the 25th, David Price, the first overall pick from the 2007 MLB draft, pitches the first complete game and shutout of his career, 6 nothing against the Tampa Bay Rays. Victory win at Tropicana Field against the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, besides 
Jays catcher Jose Molina guns down a team record for Tampa Bay base, base runners trying to steal against him, but to no avail. On April 26, the Philadelphia Phillies signed Ryan Hard, Howard to a five-year deal. $125 million contract extension that will keep Howard with the Phillies through 2016. It is the largest contract in Phillies history and the third largest average annual value of a contract, $25 million per year in baseball history. April 28th, Commissioner Bud Selig's special uh, committee for on-field matters expands all-star rosters again, with each team bringing 34 players with 13 pitchers per team to the July 13th game at Angel Stadium in Anaheim. California is part of several changes. Another change is that a pitcher who starts on the final Sunday before the All-Star break will be ineligible to pitch in the All-Star game and will be replaced on the roster. In addition, a designated hitter to normal baseball rules, each manager may designate a position player who will be eligible for re-entry to the game if the final position player at any position is injured. April 29th, a new report shows Major League Baseball equaled its best grades for racial and gender diversity hiring, even as the percentage of African American players dropped again in 2009 from 10.2% to 9%. The sport had made a small stride since reaching a low of 8.2% in 2007, but the latest data indicates a steady rise in percentage of black players might be years away. On April the 30th, Johnny Damon becomes the 68th player to score 1,500 runs, and he is batted in by Maglio Ordonez in his sacrifice fly. Let me take a second, take a sip of water here, then we will get into the month of May. Right, we got five people watching, seven thumbs up, going into May now. May 2nd, Minnesota Twins catcher Wilson Ramos goes four for five with a double in his Major League debut to become the only twin besides Kirby Puckett in 1984 to collect four hits in a Major League debut, as well as the only catcher in modern history since 1900 to collect four hits in his MLB debut. Ramos followed his debut by going three for four and driving in his first run on May 3rd. May 3rd, the New York Yankees second baseman Robinson Cano and Minnesota Twins starter Francisco Lariano are named the American League Player and Pitcher of the Month for April. Respectively, Cano hit a Major League Best 400 batting average, including 8 home runs, 21 runs scored, and an 18 RBIs. Lariano went 3-0 and and finished as the only American League starter with a sub-1 Point zero zero ERA in 29 innings, which included a 23-inning scoreless streak. During the eighth inning of the Phillies-Cardinals game, 17-year-old Steve Consalvi is tasered after storming the field at Citizens Bank Park. Arizona Diamondbacks second baseman Kelly Johnson and Colorado Rockies starter Ubaldo Jimenez are named the National League Player of the Month and Pitcher of the Month, respectively, for April. <clears throat> Jason hit 313 with 17 runs scored and 18 RBIs, and also led the league with nine home runs and a slugging percentage of 750. Jimenez, who posted a 5-0 record with 31 strikeouts and a .79 ERA in 34 and a third innings of work, also hurled the first no-hitter in Rockies history. On May 6th in Round Rock, Texas, the Express debuted a new pitcher named Billy Rap Rojo Johnson, who in reality was act- actor Will Farrell in disguise. On May the 7th, at Citizens Bank Park, Jamie Moore becomes the first pitcher to throw a shutout in four separate decades, giving up only two hits in the Philadelphia Phillies' 7-7 and 
seven to nothing victory over the Atlanta Braves at 47 years old, uh, 170. 47 years, 170 days old, Moyer is also the oldest pitcher to throw a major league shutout, eclipsing Phil Necro's record by almost a year. At 46 years, 188 days old, Necro, while pitching for the New York Yankees, tossed a four-hit shutout against the Toronto Blue Jays on October 6, 1985. The shutout was also Necro's 300th career victory. Starlin Castro of the Chicago Cubs becomes the first player in the 1990s to play in the majors. Castro arrived in historic style, hitting a three-run home run in his first at-bat and a bases-loaded triple, sliding headfirst into the record books with six runs batted in. The most ever in modern a modern day debut. Chicago defeats the Cincinnati Reds 14 to 7 while the 20 year old rookie becomes the youngest shortstop in Cubs history surpassing Marty Shea who was 100 days older when he made it to the majors in 1916. On May 9th on Mother's Day with his grandmother in attendance Dallas Braden of the Oakland Athletic pitches a 4 to nothing perfect game against the Tampa Bay Rays and at Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. The perfect game is the second in athletic history. Catfish Hunter had thrown the first 42 years and one day earlier. On May 8, 1968, also by a 4-0 score at Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. It is also the first no-hitter by an athletic pitcher since Dave Stewart in 1990, the first complete game of Braden's career. The Tampa Bay Rays had been the victim of the last perfect game in the majors by Chicago White Sox pitcher Mark Bueller on July 23, 2009. On May the 11th, due to the pending G20 summit to be held in Toronto, Ontario, Canada that weekend, the Philadelphia Phillies Toronto Blue Jays series is moved from Rogers Center to Citizens Bank Park. For statistical purposes, the Blue Jays serve as the home team and use the designated hitter rule as the interleague series. This marks the first time the Phillies have played the Blue Jays in Toronto since the 1993 World Series. All right, on May 13th, Matt Latos comes extremely close to pitching a no-hitter, but has to settle for a one-hit shutout and the first complete game of his career as the San Diego Padres beat the San Francisco Giants one to nothing. The only hit Latos allowed is a ground ball by Eli Whiteside in the sixth inning that glances off him towards the third baseman. Uh, Chase Headley, who, who, whose throw to first base is a fraction too late to retire Whiteside. For good measure, Latos also drives in the only run of the game. Zach Greinke finally earns his first win of the year, but it comes too late to save Kansas City Royals manager Trey Hillman. The Royals announced after their 6-4 win over the Cleveland Indians that Hillman has been fired and will be replaced by former Milwaukee Brewer manager Ned Yost. At the time, the Royals are 12-23 and in a familiar last place in the American League Central Division. Sam Sports Shop, how are you doing? It says, hi, Mr. Donald, how are you doing? I am doing well, Sam. Nice to see you in the stream. I have not seen you for a little while. Let me continue on with the May uh, year in review for the baseball card set we, before we get breaking into it. Hey, everyone, I am doing great. Awesome. So May 19th, center fielder Angel Pagan hits an inside-the-park home run and starts a triple play, but it's not enough for the New York Mets in a 5-3 loss to the Washington Nationals. Pagan becomes the first player in 55 years to take part in both feats in the same game. Philadelphia Philly shortstop Ted Kaczynski was the last player to do so on September 25th. 1955 against the New York Giants. On May 20th, after trailing 9-3 against the Cincinnati Reds, the Atlanta Braves 
for seven runs in the bottom of the ninth inning, all topped off by a walk-off grand slam by pitcher Brooks Conrad. On May 27th, the New York Mets complete a three-game sweep of the Philadelphia Phillies, in which Philadelphia shut out all three games. The last time the Mets accomplished such a feat was September 26th through the 28th the in 1969, also against the Phillies. May 29th at Sun Life Stadium, Roy Holiday of the Philadelphia Phillies pitches a one to nothing perfect game against the Florida Marlins, with Oakland's Dallas Braden having pitched a perfect game on May 9th. This season is the first in modern history to witness two perfect games. Holiday strikes out 11 in his masterpiece, the second perfect game in Phillies history. Jim Bunning had pitched on uh, the first on June 21st, 1964. The home plate umpire is Mike DeMuro, whose father, Lou, had been the home plate umpire for Jim Palmer's no-hitter in 1969. And then to close out the month of May, Ubaldo Jimenez pitches a four-hitter to become the Majors' first 10-game winner this year, outpitching Tim Lincecum to lead the Colorado Rockies past the San Francisco Giants at uh, four to nothing at Coors Field. Um, Jimenez records record sits at ten and one with a point seven eight ERA and eleven starts since the earned run statistic became official in 1912 National League and 1913 with the American League. The only other two pitchers to have won at least 10 of their first 11 starts with ERAs under 1 is Eddie Sicote, 11 wins, no losses with a .95. And in 1919, Juan Marcal, 10 wins, no losses with a .80 in 1956. And then Max Scherzer of the Detroit Tigers strikes out 14 Oakland Athletics batters in five and two-thirds innings. This is the most strikeouts for a pitcher in less than six innings of work dating back to 1920. Get ready to move into um, Did I see the World Series game last night? No, I did not see it, but I did listen to it on the radio. I don't have no way to watch the baseball games, unfortunately. We had to make a decision and get rid of our DISH network uh, this last summer when we were trying to downsize all of our bills, including our our cell phone service. We had to go down into kind of like a, a senior type cell, cell, cell phone service. So, uh, but I did listen to it on the radio while my, watch, my, my wife watched some news on the internet. <laughs> so that's what I do and have been doing is just listening to different baseball games on the radios, but now baseball is done till spring training. <clears throat> then I'll have to figure out how that works. I think they do it on the radio. Okay, so let's get into the month of June here. The month of June seems quite lengthy, but let's go through it real quick. June 1st, the Arizona Diamondbacks acquire pitcher Dontrell Willis from the Detroit Tigers for right-hand reliever Billy Buckner. June 2nd, after 22 seasons, Ken Griffey Jr. announces he is retiring effective immediately. All right, the Boston Red Sox designated hitter David Ortiz and starting pitcher John Lester earn American League Player and Pitcher of the Month respectively for May. Ortiz hits 363, 29 and 80 in 23 games, including four doubles, 10 home runs, 16 runs, and 27 RBIs. He also posted a major league best 788 slugging percentage and a 424 on base percentage. Um, Lester, who posted a perfect 5 to 0 record for six outings, allowed just 24 hits through 44 innings of work while leading the majors with 45 strikeouts as 1.84 ERA was the lowest of any American League pitcher with more than 27 innings pitched. While his five wins in May boosted his career record to 48 and 18 and his 727 winning percentage is the best in Major League Baseball history since 1901. Among pitchers with at least 50 decisions and 
the nine best winning percentage ever through a pitcher pitcher's uh, first 100 starts. It's the fourth career player of the month award for Ortiz and the third pitcher of the month honor for Lester. It marks the first time that two American League monthly awards were captured by teammates in the same month since 2006 when Joe Maurer and Joe San- Johan Santana of the Minnesota Twins won the honors. The Atlanta Braves first baseman Troy Glaus and Colorado Rockies start- starting pitcher Ubaldo Jimenez are selected National League Player and Pitcher of the Month, respectively, for May. Glaus led the National League with 28 RBIs while hitting 330, or 34 and 103 with six home runs. 17 runs and 534 slugging percentage. The 2002 World Series Most Valuable Player finished the month riding a Game 6 hitting streak. Jimenez became the first pitcher in the majors to win the monthly award in April and May since Pedro Martinez of the Boston Red Sox did it in 1999. He also is the National League pitcher to repeat the feat since John Smoltz of the Atlanta Braves did it in 1996. Jimenez ranked first in the National League in ERA with .78 and was tied for first in victories uh, with five and innings pitched 46 for the month. On May 3rd, he struck out a career high 13 batters in seven innings of work against the San Diego Padres and ended the month with 26 consecutive scoreless innings. This scoreless inning stretch marks the second time this season that Jimenez pitched 25 or more consecutive innings of shutout ball. Detroit Tigers pitcher Armando Galarga comes in comes within one out of throwing a perfect game. With two outs in the ninth inning, Cleveland Indians shortstop Jason Donald hits a soft ground ball to the Tigers' first baseman, Miguel Cabrera, who tosses the ball to Galarga, covering first. Though video replay showed that Galarga beat Donald to the bag, first base umpire Jim Joyce calls Donald safe. Joyce is heckled by the Tigers players and coaches for several minutes afterwards, almost causing a brawl. Brawl. The next batter, Trevor Crow, grounds out to Brandon Inge, ending the game in a 3-0 victory for the Tigers. Later on Fox Sports Detroit's Tigers live postgame show, Galarga said Joyce apologized to him and gave him a hug. I just, uh, I just cost that kid a perfect game. I thought he beat the throw. I was convinced he beat the throw until I saw the replay. <laughs> All right. Uh, that was a great game. Dodgers won 3-1. to one. I was rooting for Tampa. Uh, I was kind of rooting for Tampa, too. But I, they, sh- they shouldn't have taken their pitcher out. He was doing so good, and they should have left him in longer. All right. Trent Border says, good day, Donald. How you doing there, Trent? Oh, we got five watching. Nine thumbs up, thumbies up, thumbies up, thumbies up for me. Uh, Bibby Bobka didn't get a reminder. Sorry, I'm no problem, Bibby. How did everything go Sunday, Kevins? Kevins, Kevins. Hmm, a little confused on that one, Bibby. I don't even know if is Kevin in here. Oh wait, no, Kevin was in here earlier. I remember he was. He was like first in the chat, so Kevin's probably lurking in the background there, Bibby. So he might not see that, but now that I mentioned it, he might see what you wrote there. How did everything go Sunday, Kevin's? Uh, Donald, I have been downsizing some of my collection, so might be sending you something in the near future. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no problem there, Trent. I will find something to do with it. <laughs> no, always looking for donations to the channel, that's for sure. But I will be trying to ramp up working on getting stuff that I don't personally PC. But, um, yes, let's continue on here. We are in June. We're almost to the halfway mark of the year here. And I'd like to finish before noon. <laughs> the, the history part, at least. 
after accum- uh, June 3rd, after accumulating a leg worse, 15 and 39 record, the Baltimore Orioles fire manager Dave Tremblay, third base coach Juan Samuel, replaces him. On June the 5th, Florida International University shortstop Garrett Wittrells extends his hitting streak to 56 games, the same number of Joe DiMaggio's 1941 Major League record, just too shy of Robin Ventura's NCAA record. The Golden Panthers are eliminated with a 15-4 loss at Dart- Dartmouth in the NCAA Gables Regional. Therefore, Wittels go will go into the 2011 season with the streak intact. On June 7th, the Washington Nationals select College of Southern Nevada catcher outfielder Bryce Harper with the first overall pick in the 2010 Major League Baseball draft. Also, Delino DeShields Jr., son of former second baseman, is selected eighth overall by the Houston Astros. John DeFranco Jr. is selected by the New York Mets and the team for which his father pitched for 14 of his 20 seasons in the 42nd round. The Los Angeles Dodgers select Andre Ether's brother, Devin, in the 32 round, the Detroit Tigers select Justin Verlander's brother, Benjamin, in the 46th round, and the Toronto Blue Jays select right-hander uh, Gabriel Romero, brother of Southpaw and former first-round draftee Ricky Rom- Romero, in the, 74- in the 47th round. Reggie Golden, a product of Major League Baseball's RBI program, Reviving Baseball in Inner Cities, instituted with the hope of exposing more inner city kids to the game, and is selected in the second round of the Chicago Cubs. The New York Giants' Chad Jones and Seattle Seahawks' Golden Tate was were selected in the 50th round by Milwaukee Brewers and San Francisco Giants, respectively. On June 8th, Washington Nationals pitcher Steven Strasburg makes his big league debut in the Pittsburgh Pirates, striking out 14, including his last seven, and not walking any over seven innings. The 2009 Major League Baseball draft number one overall pick wins his MLB debut 5-2. June 10th, at U.S. Cellular Field, Omar Vizquel of the Chicago White Sox hits a first-inning home run in a 3-0 victory over the Detroit Tigers. Vizquel joins Ted Williams, Willie McCovey, and Ricky Henderson as players who have hit home runs in four different decades. All right, uh, popping into the chat real quick. i seen it moving. Um, Sam Sports Card says bye. Uh, Kevin's card collecting on Bibby. Everything went awesome. Thanks for asking. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Kevin will listen in to the history part of it and stuff. Won't be chatting much. He's at work, so he just, like, has it playing in the background so he has something to to listen to at work. <clears throat> so, um... On June 12th at Fenway Park, Daniel Nava of the Boston Red Sox becomes the second player to hit a Grand Slam home run on the very first Major League pitch he sees. His shot comes off Joe Blanton in the second inning of the Red Sox 10-2 victory over the Philadelphia Phillies. Kevin Kuzminoff was the first player to hit a Grand Slam on the very first pitch he saw, which he did with the Cleveland Indians against the Texas Rangers on September 2nd, 2006. <laughs> I need to find a sugar mama so I don't have to. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> June fifteenth, the Oakland A's acquire outfielder Connor Jackson from the Arizona Diamondbacks for minor league pitcher Sam Demel. On June twenty third, the Florida Marlins dismiss manager Freddie Gonzalez, Edwin Rodriguez, who has spent the last one and a half seasons as manager of Triple A New Orleans, takes over as manager on an interim basis. Also fired are bench coach Carlos Tasca and hitting coach Jim Presley. They're replaced on an interim basis by Brandon Hyde and John Molly, respectively. In his second game back from the disabled list, Jimmy Rollins of the Philadelphia Phillies hits the first ever walk-off home run of his career, beating 
the Cleveland Indians, 7-6. to six. And then June 25th at Tropicana Field, Edwin Jackson at, of the Arizona Diamondbacks. No hits his former team, the Tampa Bay Rays, one to nothing, and survives shaky, a shaky start, uh, walking seven batters in the first three innings, including walking the bases loaded in the third. And overall, the no-hitter is the second in Diamondbacks history, the other being Randy Johnson's perfect game on May 18, 2004. Jackson also became the first pitcher to no-hit a former team since Terry Mulholland of the Philadelphia Phillies no-hit the San Francisco Giants on August 15, 1990. Then June 27th at Citizens Bank Park, Jamie Moyer of the Philadelphia Phillies defeats the Toronto Blue Jays 11-2, but not before giving up two-run home run to Vernon Wells in the third inning. The home run is the 506th Moyer has given up in his career, breaking the all-time record he had shared with Robin Roberts. The Baltimore Orioles defeat the Washington Nationals 4-3, becoming the first team since 1901. Detroit Tigers to win four consecutive games after trailing by three runs or more in each game. June 29th, Denard Spann of the Minnesota Twins collects three triples against the Detroit Tigers, the first player with three in a game since Raphael Forcal in 2002. Then we get into the month of July. July 1st, the Arizona Diamondbacks fire manager A.J. Hinch and general manager Josh Burns, Kirk Gibson, uh, takes over as interim manager and Jerry Depoto becomes the interim general manager. Oh, is that where Jerry Poto came from before he came to the Mariners? <laughs> July 3rd at Target Field, Jim Thomey of the Minnesota Twins hits two home runs in a 8-6 loss uh, to the Tampa Bay Rays. The home run The home runs give Thome five hundred and seventy four in his career, moving him past Harmon Killebrew into tenth place on the all time home run list. July sixth, the Texas Rangers outfielder Josh Hamilton and Seattle Mariners pitcher Cliff Lee earn American League Player and Pitcher of the Month, respectively, for June. Hamilton led all major league batters with a four fifty four average that combined with ten doubles, nine homers, a club record, forty nine hits, and twenty three game hitting streak, secured the honor for Hamilton. He capped his monster month off by officially hitting the longest home run in history of Rangers ballpark, a june twenty seventh game against the Astros. Lee, who posted a 4-1 record with a 1.76 ERA, struck out 36 batters while walking only two. At one point, he completed a streak of 38 in the third innings without giving up a walk. New York Mets third baseman David Wright and Florida Marlins pitcher Josh Johnson were voted National League Player and Pitchers of the Month, respectively, for June. Wright led the leg with a 404 average and 29 RBI, uh, placed second in slugging with 683 on base percentage, 447, and was tied for third in doubles with 11. While hitting six home runs and swiping bases in 26 games, he also became the first player in Mets history to hit at least 400 with 25 more RBIs in a calendar month while recording 29 RBI month for the second time in his career in June 2006. Johnson compiled a 3-1 record in five June starts with a 1.18 ERA while striking out 38 in 38 innings and walking six. His ERA was second best among National League starters on the month while placing third in strikeouts. Jason allowed no more than two earned runs in each of his starts this month and has not allowed more than two earned runs in consecutive starts dating back to June 13th. <clears throat> On June, July 9th, 
Uh, the Texas Rangers acquired ace starting pitcher Cliff Lee and reliever Mark Lowe from the Seattle Mariners in exchange for first baseman Justin Smoke and three minor league pitching prospects. At Citizen Bank Park, the Philadelphia Phillies overcame a 7-1 to deficit in the ninth inning to beat the Cincinnati Reds 9-7. Cody Ransom hits a two-out, two-run homer to tie the game. And Ryan Howard wins it with a two-run walk-off homer in the 10th inning. July 13th, the National League wins the first All-Star game since 1996. Atlanta Braves catcher Bryant McCann wins the All-Star MVP award after driving in all three of the runs scored for the National League. The score was 3-1. to one and was played at Angel Stadium. In the bottom of the first inning, Yankee shortstop Jerry Derek Jeter is inducted, introduced by longtime Yankee public address announcer Bob St- Shepard, who died two days prior to the age of 99. July 16th in the Texas Rangers 8-4 victory, over the Boston Red Sox, Fenway Park, Benji Molina becomes the eighth player since 1900 and the first catcher to hit a grand slam and hit for the cycle the same game. His triple to complete the cycle comes in the eighth inning. He hits a fly ball to the deepest part of the park in center field into the triangle. The ball glancing off center fielder Eric Patterson's glove, Molina becomes the first catcher to hit for the cycle since Chad Muller on April 27, 2004, the first visiting player to hit for the cycle at Fenway Park since Cleveland Andre Thornton on April 2, 1978. Then July 20th, the Los Angeles Dodgers pitcher Clayton Kershaw is accused of intentionally hitting Aaron Rowand of the San Francisco Giants and ejected from the game. Joe Torrey and bench coach Bob Schaefer argue the call and are also ejected. The next day, Kershaw is suspended five games while Torrey and Schaefer get one day ex- suspensions. On July 23rd, Yankee catcher Jorge Posada records his 1,000th career RBI. 26th of July, Tropicana Field, Matt Garza, the Tampa Bay Rays, no hits, the D- Detroit Tigers, 5 to nothing, and a no-hitter against the Rays in, in Rays history. He faces the minimum 27 batters, yielding only a second inning walk to Brennan Bush, who is then retired on Ryan Brom's double play ground ball. Um, His opposing pitcher, Max Scherzer, also has no hitting going into the sixth inning until he walks the bases loaded and Matt Joyce hits a grand slam. On July 30th at Coors Field, the Colorado Rockies set a major league record with 11 consecutive base hits in a 7-2 pounding of the Chicago Cubs. With the Rockies leading 5-2, Clint Barnes opens up the eighth with a double to advance to third on Melvin Mora's pinch single. After the next two batters, Dexter Fowler and Ryan Spielborgs strike out, Carlos Gonzalez singles in Barnes to begin the hit streak, which includes home runs by Chris Iannetta and Fowler. Gonzalez and Troy Tulowitzki collect two hits during the streak, which ends after later the the latter's double scored Spillboroughs and Gonzalez for the Rockies, 11th and 12th runs in the inning. A franchise record, Brad Hopp and Ionetta then walk to load the bases, and finally Ian Stewart flies out to end the inning. One month after his no-hitter, the Arizona Diamondbacks trade Edwin Jackson to the Chicago White Sox for Daniel Hudson and David Holmberg. Jackson becomes the first pitcher to be traded after pitching a no-hitter earlier in the season since Cliff Chambers in 1951. Then July 31st, Carlos Gonzalez hits a game-ending home run to complete the cycle. And the Colorado Rockies rally to beat the Chicago Cubs 6-5 to after blowing a three-run lead in the eighth inning. It is the fourth straight game for Gonzalez with a homer while his cycle is in the sixth in Rockies history and fourth in the majors this season. Besides Gonzalez, just four other players in MLB history have completed a cycle with a walk-off home run.
Ken Boyer, 1961, Caesar Tovar in 1972, George Brett in 1979, and Dwight Evans in 1984. Right, getting ready um, to move into the month of August. Let me take a sip of water here. <clears throat> All right, August 4th at Yankee Stadium, Alex Rodriguez of the New York Yankees hits his 600th home run, becoming the seventh player in Major League history to do so in a 5-1 victory over the Toronto Blue Jays. The shot comes in the first inning against the Jays, Sean Markham, and three years to the day of Rodriguez's 500th home run. Rodriguez also becomes the youngest player to hit his 600th home run at 35 years, 8 days. Babe Ruth had held the previous record of 36 years, 196 days. San Francisco Giants rookie catcher Buster Posey and Philadelphia Phillies ace Roy Holiday are voted the National League Player and Pitcher of the Month, respectively, for July. Posey led the National League with 43 hits, ranked him third with 417 average, 43 for 103. His 24 RBIs were tied for third best in the National League, while his 466 on-base percentage and 699 slugging percentage ranked him fourth and fifth in the league, respectively. He belted seven home runs, while his 21-game hitting streak from July 4th to 29 marked the longest streak in the National League this season. In five July starts, Holiday went 3-1 and one with a 1.54 ERA. His 39 strikeouts were good for second in the National League, while his 41 innings pitched ranked fourth. He noticed his major league leading eighth complete game of the season, while his 158 strikeouts and 2.17 ERA ranked second in the majors, and his 13 wins are tied for fourth. On August the 6th, in Detroit, the Angels' Tory Hunter gets ejected for arguing a strikeout. In a fit of rage, he throws a bag of balls onto the field. The next day, he is suspended for four games. On August the 7th, the Blue Jays hit eight home runs in a 17-11 victory over the Rays. Leading the way is J.A. Arenciba with two in his Major League debut. Aaron Siba becomes the first player in modern year in modern era to have four hits and two home runs in his major league debut. On August the eighth at Rogers Center, Brandon Morrow in Toronto Blue Jays toss tosses his first shutout, first complete game with a career seventeen strikeouts and a one oh victory over the Tampa Bay Rays. A two out RBI single by Vernon Wells in the first inning marks the difference. Morrow only allows two singles by Evan Longoria in the ninth inning. It marks the fifth time this season the Rays have taken one or zero hits in a single game, including a perfect game and one no-hitter. On August the 9th, after accumulating the Amer an American League West worst record and third worst in all of baseball of 42-70, and 70, the Seattle Mariners Fire manager Don Wakamatsu, bench coach Ty Van Berklo, and pitching coach Rick Adair, and performance coach Steve Heck. They're replaced by Dar Darren Brown, Roger Hansen, and Carl Willis, respectively. On August the 11th, the Arizona Diamondbacks tie a major league record by hitting four consecutive home runs with Adam LaRoche, Miguel Mar Montero, Mark Reynolds, and Stephen Drew. Connecting in the fourth inning to beat the Milwaukee Brewers 8-2 to at Miller Park. The Diamondbacks became just the seventh team in Major League history to accomplish the feat. On August 17th, target field Jim Thome hit two, a two-run walk-off home run in the tenth inning to lift the Minnesota Twins over the Chicago White Sox 7-6. to It was the twelfth walk-off home run of his career, tying him for... Uh, first all-time with Jimmy Fox, Mickey Mantle, Stan Musial, 
Frank Robinson and Babe Ruth, among others. August 18th at Fenway Park, the Red Sox defeat the Angels 7-5 to by striking out the side in the ninth inning. Red Sox closer Jonathan Papelbon becomes the first pitcher to notch at least 30 saves in five consecutive Major League seasons. August 19th, former Major League pitcher Roger Clemens is indicted by a federal grand jury on charges of lying to Congress over his use of performance-enhancing drugs. August the 22nd, Chicago Cubs manager Lou Pinella, who had previously announced that he would retire at the end of the season, announces his immediate retirement in order to care for his ailing mother. And then August 30th, the Chicago White Sox acquire slugger Manny Ramirez from the Los Angeles Dodgers off waivers. All right. <clears throat> September 1st, Niger Morgan of the Washington Nationals charged the mound after Florida Marlins pitcher Chris Volstad throws behind him, starting a brawl. Morgan receives an eight-game suspension when he begins serving on September 17th, while Volstad begins uh, serving a six-game suspension on September 13th. September 4th, at Target Field, Jim Thome of the Minnesota Twins hits uh, two home runs in the Twins' 12-4 victory over the Texas Rangers. The home runs give Stome 584 in his career, moving him past Mark McGuire for ninth place on the all-time list. September 6th, Yankee Stadium, Alex Rodriguez sets a major league record, registering 100 runs batted in for the 14th time in his career. After homering in the fourth inning of the New York Yankees 4-3 loss to, uh, to the Baltimore Orioles, Rodriguez records his 100th RBI in the sixth inning on a sacrifice fly that scores Nick Swisher. Rodriguez breaks a four-way tie that had he had shared with Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Jimmy Fox with 13 seasons of at least 100 RBIs. September 8th, the Milwaukee Brewers 4-2 victory. Oh, Cardinals fan, 1990 says, Hi, I am alive now. <laughs> you survived. Rodriguez breaks a four-way tie that he had shared with Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Jimmy Fox with 13 seasons of at least 100 RBIs. Sorry, I might have repeated something there. September 8th, the Milwaukee Brewers 4-2 victory over the St. Louis Cardinals at Miller Park. Trevor Hoffman records his 600th save. On September 11th at Progressive Field, Jim Thome of the Minnesota Twins hits a 12th inning home run for the lone run of the game in the Twins' 1-0 victory over former team the Cleveland Indians. The home run gives Tome 587 on his career, passing Frank Robinson for 8th place on the all-time home runs list. All right, September 23rd at Rogers Center, Ichiro Suzuki of the Seattle Mariners becomes the first player to record 200 hits in 10 consecutive seasons. His 200th hit, a double, comes off Toronto Blue Jays starter Sean Hill in the third inning. Suzuki also breaks an American League record he had shared with Ty Cobb of nine seasons with 200 hits and ties Pete Rose's record of 10 200-hit seasons. However, the Blue Jays defeat the Mariners 1-0 as Jose Bautista, who had already broken George Bell's single-season franchise record of 47 home runs in 1987, hits number 50 in the first inning off Felix Hernandez for the game's only run. September 24th, the Cincinnati Reds left fielder Araldis Chapman throws the fastest pitch ever recorded in a major league game at 105 miles per hour to the San Diego Padres' Tony Gwynn Jr. September 25th, Texas Rangers rookie closer uh, Neftali Feliz acquire acquires his 38th save of the season against the Oakland Athletics, setting a record for most saves by a rookie in a season. He surpasses the previous record of 37 held by former Seattle Mariners closer Kazuhiro Sasaki in 2000. Police's total for the year is at 40 saves by and the win by the Texas Rangers also clinched their National League Division title since 1999. September 28th, 
Uh, Lo Giant Slugger Lee Dae Ho wins his third Triple Crown in the 29 years of the Korean Baseball Organization after hitting 364 average with 44 home runs and 133 runs batted in. Lee also becomes the first multiple Triple Crown winner, having turned the feat in 2006. The University of California announces that due to budget costs, he will eliminate its baseball program program after the 2011 season. It's 120th. Cincinnati Reds outfielder Jay Bruce hits a walk-off home run of Houston Astros pitcher Tim Brydeck to clinch the team's first National League Central Division title since 1995. And then September 30th, MLB players and owners agree to free agency changes. Under the deal announced on this date, players no longer have to file for free agency, but automatically are set free. The exclusive period for teams to negotiate with their free agent eligible players has been cut from 15 days to 5. The deadline is moved up for clubs to offer salary arbitration to their former players who become free agents, as is the deadline for teams to offer contracts for the following season to players on their 40-man rosters. In addition, teams, players, and agents will be restricted in their ability to conduct agent negotiations in the media. Moving into October. October 3rd, on the final day of the regular season, the San Francisco Giants and Atlanta Braves clinch playoff bursts. The Giants defeat the San Diego Padres 3-2 to win the National League West, simultaneously clinching the wildcard berth for the Braves, who had beaten Philadelphia Phillies earlier that day. Uh, October 4th, the New York Yankees, uh, third baseman Alex Rodriguez and Colorado Rockies shortstop Troy Tulowitzki are selected American League National League Players of the Month, respectively, for September. Rodriguez provided a bright spot for the Yankees down the final stretch run, leading the American League in RBIs with 26 and slugging percentage 667. While tying for second with nine run, nine home runs, he also reached safely in 18 of 22 games for his team, propelling the Yankees to their 15th postseason berth in the last 16 years. Tulewinski provided plenty of support for Colorado, leading the majors with 15 home runs and 40 RBIs, 30 runs scored, and an 800 slugging percentage. Tulewinski's finished the season ranking first among Major League shortstops in home runs and RBIs batting average with 315. Slugging percentage 568, OPS 949 to become the first player to lead all National League shortstops in both slugging percentage and fielding percentage with 984 since Jay Bell accomplished the feat in 1993 with the Pittsburgh Pirates. David Price of the Tampa Bay Rays and Derek Lowe of the Atlanta Braves are voted American League and National League Pitchers of the Month, respectively, for September. Price was instrumental in the Rays winning their second AL East championship in club history as he posted a 4 to nothing record with 33 strikeouts and a 1.67 ERA over six starts. Lowe was equally impressive for the Braves, who secured the National League wild card for their trip to the playoffs since 2005 collecting a perfect 15 and 0 in 5 September starts with a 1.17 ERA and a strikeout to walk ratio of 29 uh, to 3. Lowe also pitched on 3 days rest winning a critical game against the Florida Marlins September 29th and finished the regular season with a 16 and 12 record with a 4.00 ERA with 136 strikeouts, 193 and two-thirds innings of work. The New York Mets announcer, both manager Jerry Manuel, the Ger general manager Omar Min Minaya, would not return for the 2011 season. On October 5th, in Japanese baseball, former Major League Lager Matt Merton breaks Ichiro Suzuki's record for the most hits in a single season. Merton gets his 211th hit of the year with a two-run single 
to center for the second inning for the Hanschen Tigers against the Yakult Swallows. Suzuki gets the Suzuki set the record of 210 in 1994 for the Oryx Blue Wave. October 6th, in Game 1 of the NLDS, Citizen Bank Park, Roy Holiday of the Philadelphia Phillies, no hits to Cincinnati Reds, 4 to nothing. A fifth inning walk to Jay Bruce is the only base runner against Holiday, who already pitched perfect game on May 29th. The hitter is the second postseason play joining Don Larson's perfect game in the 1956 World Series. Holiday also becomes the first pitcher to throw no-hitters in one season since Nolan Ryan in 1973. On October 9th, hold on a second here, Uh, the New York Yankees defeat the Minnesota Twins 6-1, to sweeping the ALDS in three games. October 10th, the Philadelphia Phillies defeat the Cincinnati Reds 2 to nothing, completing a three-game sweep of the NLDS. October 11th, the San Francisco Giants defeat the Atlanta Braves 3-2 to to win the NLDS three games to one. All four games in the series are decided by one run. October 12th, the Texas Rangers defeat the Tampa Bay Rays 5 to 1 in game 5 of the ALDS to win postseason series for the first time. Each game in the series is won by the road team. October 22nd, the Texas Rangers defeat the New York Yankees 6 to 1 to win the ALCS for game 2. For games to 2. Uh, October 23rd, the San Francisco Giants defeat the Philadelphia Phillies 3-2 to to win the, the NLCS 4 games to 2. October 28th, the San Francisco Giants defeat the Texas Rangers 9 to nothing in Game 2 of the World Series. Texas reliever Derry Collin issues 3 consecutive walks in the 8th inning on only 13 pitches, including 11 balls in a row. The 3 consecutive walks tie a world record series. Uh, October 29th, the New York Mets named Sandy Alderson their new general manager. On October 31st, in Game 4 of the World Series, Madison Boomgardner and Buster Posey of the San Francisco Giants sorry, become the first all-rookie battery in a World Series game since 1947. Boom Gardner combines with Brian Wilson to hit three hit the Texas Rangers to a four to nothing franchise victory. Combined with a nine to zero loss in the Giants game two, the Rangers become the first team to be shut out twice in a World Series since 1966. It 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 is also the Giants pitching staff's fourth shutout of the postseason, tying a major league record. On November first. The San Francisco Giants defeat the Rangers 3-1 to to win the World Series, four games to one. It is the franchise's first championship since 1954 and the first since moving to San Francisco prior to the 58 season. Tim Lincecum and Brian Wilson combined to three-hit the Rangers. Edgar Renteria, whose seventh inning three-run home run against the Cliff Lee broke a scoreless tie and counted for all the Giants' runs in the game and was this, named the series MVP. November 7th, the Chiba Latte defeat the Chichinga Dragons 8-7 to to win the Japanese series four games to two with one tie. It is the franchise's first championship since 2005 and fourth overall. The Marines' Tushakai is named the MVP. November 10th, the Kansas City Royals send David DeJesus to the Oakland A's for Justin Marks and Vin, Vin Mazzano. November 13th, the Florida Marlins trade uh, Cameron Maven to the San Diego Padres for Edwin Mujica and Ryan Webb. On November 16th, the Florida Marlins trade Doug Ugla to the Atlanta Braves for Michael Dunn and Omar Envante. On November 21st, the Kansas City Royals pitcher Anthony LaRue hurls a new hitter in the Venezuelan Winter League as the Nevegates de Magallanes blank the Leones del Caracas 6 to nothing. La, LaRue walks 
four and strikes out four, improving to three and zero. Oh. In six appearances, the only 16th no-hitter in the 66 years of the league. November 23rd, the New York Mets named Terry Collins as their new manager. And November 25th, free agent Kaz Matsui returns to Japan, signing with the Rakuten Eagles of the Japanese Pacific League. And then to finish off our year, December, Dan Schumann, Oral Hershiser, and Bobby Valentine will be in the booth for ESPN Sunday Night Baseball next season, the network announces. December 5th, outfielder Jason Wirth signs as a free agent with the Washington Nationals for seven years and $122 million. December 8th, the National Baseball Hall of Fame announces Dave Van Horn as the 2011 recipient uh, for, of the Ford F- C. Frick Award for Excellence in Baseball Broadcasting. He will receive the award alongside Conlon on July 23, 2011. December 11th, the outfielder Carl Crawford signs as a free agent with the Boston Red Sox for seven years and $142 million. December 15th, pitcher Cliff Lee returns to the Philadelphia Phillies signing a five-year $120 million contract with a vesting option for a sixth season in 2016, which would increase the value of the deal to $135 million. December 16th, the New York Yankees signed free agent catcher Russell Martin. December 17th, Derek Jeter and the New York Yankees agreed to a three-year $51 million contract that includes a player option for the 2014 season. The Tampa Bay Rays trade Jason Bartlett and a player to be named to the San Diego Padres for Cole Figueroa, Brandon Gomes, Cesar Ramos, and Adam Russell. December 19th, the Kansas City Royals trade pitcher Zach Grinke and shortstop Eunice Bentoncourt to the Milwaukee Brewers for Lorenzo Cain, Alcides Escobar, Jeremy Jeffries, and Jake Odorizzi. The Royals had a deal in place that would have sent Granke to Washington Nationals for infielder Danny Espinosa, reliever Doran, Drew Storen, and pitcher Jordan Zimmerman. However, Granke invoked his no-trade clause to reject the deal. December 20th, Florida International University baseball star Garrett Wilt- Wittels and four friends are arrested in the Bahamas and charged with raping two 17-year-old girls at the Atlantic Atlantis Resort and Casino in Paradise Island. Whittles and two friends were released on $10,000 bond apiece after a court hearing on the 23rd. December 23rd, the Houston Astros relief pitcher Matt Lindstrom, uh, they send relief pitcher Matt Lindstrom to the Colorado Rockies for pitchers Jonathan Aristel and Wes Music. And at the end of the year, December 30th, Hall of Famer Harmon Killer. Killebrew reveals in a statement that he has recently been diagnosed with esophageal cancer and is being treated by a team of medical professionals at the Mayo Clinic. So there you have it, finishing just before noon, the 2010 Baseball Year in Review. So there we go, we have it. The 2010 Baseball History in the Books. And now, without further ado, it is time to... Hold on. i got to fix something real quick here. Something was in the way of what I'm going to be doing next. We are going to open up this baseball card set now. 2011 complete set includes Series 1 and 2, plus a 5-card pack of veteran variation cards... And includes this special Mickey Mantle Gold Chrome card exclusive to this set. So without further ado, we're going to get into this set. Okay, I'm going to do it this way right here. Just for ease there. And ease here. Right along where the opening is for this box. Close up my blade here. Put my, my knife to the side. I have never opened up this t- style of box. I don't know why they made it so big. Except for having the Mickey Mantle Topps Chrome card on top. 
Unless that's the sole reason for doing that. I don't know exactly. I don't know if it's a... <laughs> it is. It's a box within a box. Well, that is one different way of doing that, I guess. It's having a box within a box. And this is kind of like an encased baseball card, that's for sure. But it is a box within a box. I was wondering if this was going to be a box within a box, and I am glad that it is. I'm glad it is really a box within a box. I'm glad they did it that way. Because I kind of was hoping to keep this Mickey Mantle set here. <laughs> or this Mickey Mantle card. That was... I guess they did it because they had that special Mickey Mickey Mantle card on there. I guess that's the why they packaged it that way. That's kind of like over over packaging a product, that's for sure. So now, if I ever do resell this set, I can deal, do this complete set. Because it does not mention anything about the Mickey Mantle card that I just acquired. I do like this Mickey Mantle card. I've, I've had this set for a long time, and I was like, boy, I really want that Mickey Mantle card, even though it's a... I'm going to just do this, because I, I am just aching to take this out of the case. I'm going to save this case, though. It could probably be used for something, that's for sure. But I am going to put this in a penny sleeve and a top load card for now. I don't even know if it's got value, but it is a beautiful card. Let me get a... Okay, can I get a... That's not a lucky card. It's probably too big a case, but yeah. Let me get a regular. A regular case. There we go. There's a regular. I did have one. Regular case. I thought I had to open a new box. Get that top loaded really quick here. Add this to my Mickey Mantle collection. That is an awesome, awesome Chrome card. It does say it's a 2011 reprint. The picture gets Mickey. Let me just put this one in the back here I'll put it right in front of Charlie John Jabs won't mind all right now I get to slice and dice again I'm glad they did it that way did you do left behinds package yet no that'll be uh, I will be doing part seven here right after we go through this set Right after we go through this set here is when we will get into the less left behind left behind products. And then then we will end the stream for today. For some reason my history lesson tied into the baseball card set has been getting longer, so I'm working on streamlining that just a little bit. Um, I might have to try a different way. We'll see how they start looking coming down the road. But here we go. We got our complete set here. We're going to go through and preview this. We do have a five card set here of variation cards, which we will look at these. Ooh, there is an Ichiro on top. And a Josh Hamilton on the bottom. But let's go ahead and take these cards out of the box real quick. Stack them up, up to the left here. Oh, I gotta do a smaller group here. That'd be easier to grab. There we go. Okay, let's put these here. Take these out and stack them up on top here. Go through these. Oops, almost sliding everything out of the box here. I think I can get it into four main stacks, maybe. 
it is a 660 card set so let me see if i can get the last out of here yep get this out of here put these all up here and i don't think any of them are sticking together which is a good sign i'm glad they're not sticking together Okay. I'm mumbling to myself in case you're wondering. All right. So let's get into Factory Set Limited Edition. Huh. Interesting. Never seen them do it this way before. It's nice how they do these differently, huh? Let's see what we got here. We got an Ichiro car, factory set limited edition. Oh, they just put on their limited edition. Um, Buster Posey with the Giants. Oh, that was Ichiro, of course, with the Seattle Mariners. Here's an Alex Rodriguez with the New York Yankees. And Albert Pujols with the St. Louis Cardinals. And a Josh Hamilton with the Texas Rangers. So let's see, 650, 100, uh, 50. So I guess these are just the limited edition or the, well, they wouldn't be short print. I wonder if they do, if they're random limited edition cards. That I'll have to do research on. 200. It looks like we got card number 50, 100, 198, 200, and 650. When I sort go through the sorting process here, I will figure this out. All right, Sam Sport Shop is back. Thanks, to Sam, for popping into the stream here. All right, let me wheedle these down a little bit. We'll start going through this. Should do it like five. Try and see if I can get five stacks here. How's that sound? Yeah, that's pretty close. Pretty close, pretty close. Are you live now, Cardinals fan? Oh, <laughs> that's why Cardinals fan was saying they were live. No problem. Anybody wants to jump the Cardinals fan? Uh, it does not break my heart. All right. I just like to get my content up here. So Omar Beltre, I wonder if he's related to Adrian with the Texas Rangers. Uh, Mark Texera with the New York Yankees. Josh Hamilton with the Texas Rangers. So that is interesting then here. So yeah. So that is the same as the card that's in the so you get the oh and it is a different it is a different card so it would be kind of like a a short print variation card because here's the two josh hamiltons i guess that's when they started doing the variation type cards maybe it was back in 2011. the back of the card is the same and it is the number the the numbers are different on the back here you can see that that's when they started doing the code so the 1101 is the the short print and the 1201 is the base there we go i think that was probably back in the day when they started doing their limited edition short print type cards All right, so nice to know there. Uh, Cardinals fan was live 24 minutes ago. He, I doing another stream at 4.40. Okay, Josh Hamilton with the Texas Rangers, Matt Cain with the Giants, uh, Wes Helms with the Marlins, 
Colby Rasmus. Colby Rasmus with the Cardinals. Adam Moore with the Seattle Mariners. Uh, Travis Ishikawa with the Giants. Uh, Dan Johnson with the Rays. Adrian Gonzalez with the Red Sox. Um, Eric Hinsk with the Braves. Uh, Kyle Kendrick with the Phillies. Trevor Miller with the Cardinals. Landon Powell with the A's. Adam Lind with the the Rays. Or no, the Toronto Blue Jays. Why does that always look like Rays to me? <laughs> I don't know why I get confused sometimes. Alex Casilla with the Twins. David Murphy with the Twins. Mike Pelfrey with the Mets. Jeff Neiman with the Rays. Ryan Franklin with the Cardinals. Pretty soon you'll start seeing more and more of the current baseball players that have been around for a while. That's for sure. Uh, Madison Boomgardner with the Giants. Austin Kearns with the Indians. Uh, Chris Snyder with the Pirates. Jordan Schaefer with the Braves. Uh, Ryan Howard with the Phillies. Sean Markham with the Brewers. Uh, Dallas Braden with the Athletics. Uh, Frank Francisco with the Toronto Blue Jays. Yep, Ruben Tejada with the Mets. Uh, Kendry Morales with the A's. Mitch Talbot with the Indians. Brian Roberts with the Orioles. Logan Morrison with the Marlins. Uh, Daniel Barr with the Red Sox. Wilson Bent Bentman with the Royals. Uh, Carlos Quentin with the White Sox. Giovanni Gallardo with the, the Brewers. Chris Hensley with the Reds. Carlos Zambrano with the Cubs. Um, uh, Rod Barajas with the Dodgers. Jared Saltamachia. Wow, that's a handful. With the Red Sox. Vin Mazzaro with the Royals. Kevin Kuklis with the Red Sox. Uh, Brandon Loin with the Astros. Adam LaRouche with the Nationals. Alex Avila with the Tigers. Scott Casimir with the Angels. Jorge De La Rosa with the Rockies. Jake Peavy with the White Sox. Um, Trevor Crow with the Indians. Homer Bailey with the Reds. Jeff Mathis with the Angels. E Esmel Rogers with the Rockies. Tommy Hansen with the Braves. Joe Valverde with the Tigers. Jed Lowry with the Red Sox. Joe Kim Soria with the Royals. Edwin Jackson with the White Sox. Uh, Lorenzo Kane with the Royals. Um, Grady Sizemore with the Indians. Juan Francisco with the Reds. Travis Wood with the Reds. Uh, Diane Vecito with the White Sox. Denard Spann with the Twins. Casco Fukudomi with the Cubs. <laughs> what a name. Jason Kubel with the Twins. Luke Scott with the Orioles. Russell Branyan. With the Seattle Mariners. Alex Rodriguez. With the Yankees. Jose Bautista. With the. Uh, Toronto Blue Jays. CJ Wilson. With the Rangers. Uh, John Danks. With the White Sox. Pardo Sandoval. With the Giants. Max Scherzer. With the Tigers. Scott Hairston With the Padres. Alex Rijos with the White Sox. Hung Chin Ku with the Dodgers. Uh, Brandon Morrow with the Dodgers. No, the Toronto Blue Jays, sorry. Uh, Reed Brignac with the Tampa Bay Rays. Vladimir Guerrero, Vladdy Daddy with the Rangers. Victor Martinez with the Red Sox. Jared Weaver with the Angels. 
Jim Thome, Hall of Famer with the Twins. Ty Wigginton with the Orioles. Faustin Carmona with the Indians. Uh, Gil Metch with the Royals. Ryan Rayburn with the Tigers. Uh, Brian Matsu with the Orioles. Mike Napoli with the Angels. Mark Ellis with the Athletics. Uh, Jonathan Papelbon with the Red Sox. Jorge Cantu with the Rangers. <laughs> Getting ready to finish off the first stack. Rafael Soriano with the Rays. He's I like the 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 circ it, it almost looks 3D-ish if you look at it the right way, like it's embossed. But it's not. It's it's flush with the card. It looks like it's set in there like <laughs> Rafael Soriano with the Rays. Mark Book. Bueller, how do you say that? Bueller, Bueller, with the White Sox, uh, Wade LeBlanc, with the Padres. We got Armando Galarga with the Tigers, Alex Corbin with the Royals, Carlos Carrasco with the Indians, uh, Neftali Feliz with the Tigers, Travis Hafner with the Indians, Kevin Gregg with the Toronto Blue Jays. Michael Tejada with the Padres. Carl Crawford with the Rays. Jason Vargas with the Seattle Mariners. Joel Pinero with the Angels. Jason Vartek with the Red Sox. J.J. Hardy with the Twins. Mike Markakas with the Orioles. Lance Bergman with the Yankees. Jose Lopez, third baseman for the Seattle Mariners. Michael Young with the Rangers. Uh, ben Zobrist with the Rays. Matt Latos with the Padres. Uh, Ricky Romero with the Toronto Blue Jays. Aubrey Huff with the Giants. Bobby Jenks with the White Sox. David DeJesus with the Royals. Miguel Cabrera with the Tigers. Robinson Cano with the Yankees. First stack is in the books. Did that in pretty good fashion there. Nice layout car of the card design on this year's set. I don't know if they've done a complete set. And nope, as soon as I say that, I see some horizontal cards. <laughs> Let me just kind of shift this up to the front here. As soon as I say something, I knew it was going to be too good to be true. I don't think they've done... Well, probably the older sets, I think they did. But Kelly Sopich Sop with the with the Rays. Um, Jason Mott with the Cardinals. Kyle Blanks with the Padres. Miguel Cairo with the Reds. Jose T Tabata with the Pirates, Juan Miranda with the Diamondbacks, uh, Dominic Brown with the Phillies, uh, Brett Cecil with the Toronto Blue Jays, Trevor Cahill with the Athletics, Matt Harrison with the Rangers, Phil Hughes with the Yankees. Um, uh, Willie Ibar with the, the Rays, Luke Gregerson with the Padres, Jeff Bake with the Cubs, Jason Bartlett with the Padres, Joba Chamberlain with the Yankees, Mitch Moreland with the Tigers, uh, Travis Buck with the Indians, Vernon Wells with the Angels, Evan Longoria with the Rays, Joan Figgins with the Seattle Mariners. Here we go. Uh, Bobby Abreu with the Angels. New York Yankees team card. Matt Garza with the Cubs. Brandon Belt, rookie card for the Giants. I don't think there's a whole slew of rookies in this year's cards. That is one thing that is different. Uh, St. Louis Cardinals team card. Masir Estiris with the Angels. Derry Colland with the Rangers. Uh, Cody Cody Ross with the Giants, Chris Iannetta with the Rockies, Mark Reynolds with the Orioles, 
Los Angeles Dodgers, Louisville Sluggers Award, Seattle Mariners, Ichiro and Edgar Martinez with the Seattle Mariners. Uh, Gavin Gavin Floyd with the White Sox. Joe Maurer with the Twins. Kyle Loesch with the Cardinals. Marcos Mateo with the Chicago Cubs rookie card. Minnesota Twins. There's Dolme in the back there, team card. Houston Astros, Lee and Bourne, along with somebody else there. Ivan Rodriguez with uh, Strasburg, I think. Wow. With the Nationals. Ryan Madison with the Phillies. Uh, Bud Norris with the Astros. R Juan Rivero with the Astros. Uh, Jose Reyes with the Mets. Clayton Ricard Richard with the Padres. Niger Morgan with the Brewers, Detroit Tigers, Bosch, and someone else. Fourth youngest ever to reach 1,000 Ks, Felix Hernandez with the Seattle Mariners. Philadelphia Phillies team card, Kansas City Royals. Raphael Furcal with the Dodgers. Joel Hanrahan with the Pirates. Francisco Liriano with the Twins. Jeff Sar Samarzija with the Cubs, Jason Nix with the Indians, Toronto Blue Jays team card, Pittsburgh Pirates team card, Florida Marlins team card, Ian Kinsler with the Tigers, with the Tigers, with the Rangers, Aaron Rowand with the Giants, Joe Nathan with the Twins, Mike Leak with the Reds, Brandon Allen with the Diamondbacks, Drew Soren with the Washington Nationals, Right, move on to the second half. See if I can hold this all in one slot. Split them in twos, huh? BJ Upton with the Rays, Curtis Granderson with the Yankees, Matt Kemp with the Dodgers, Mike Miner with the Braves. Am I holding it too far from the camera? You guys just need to holler at me if I am, if you want to see the cards more. Uh, Levon Hernandez with the Nationals, Matt Holliday with the Cardinals. Raul Abanez with the Phillies. Oops, almost skipped a card there. Casey McGee with the Brewers. Uh, Chris Medlin with the Braves. Rahaj Davis with the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, Ryan Spielborgs with the Rockies. Scott Baker with the Twins. All right, now we're back to normal, normal cards again. That was a lot of parallel cards. Maybe they got them all grouped together. Probably have another swig later. <laughs> Rick Harum with the A's. Uh, Barry Enright with the Diamondbacks. Tom Wilhelmson with the Seattle Mariners rookie card. Brandon Kitzler with the Brewers rookie card. Ivan De Jesus with the Dodgers rookie card. Um, Joaquin Benoit with the Tigers. Eric Sogard with the Athletics rookie card. Michael Pineda with the Seattle Mariners rookie card. Michael Martinez with the Philadelphia Phillies rookie card. Uh, Chris Getz with the Royals. Eric Bedard with the Seattle Mariners. Michael Corrado with the Pirates rookie card, Johnny Damon with the Rays, Chris Capuno with the Mets, um, Austin Jackson gold cup card for the Tigers, uh, Nathan Adcock with the Royals rookie card, Zach Britton with the Royals rookie card, uh, Albert Pujols with the Cardinals first to 30 home runs in each of first 10 seasons, I believe it says. It's such a small fine, fine print there to squeeze it in there. Texas Rangers team card. Tim Collins Royals rookie card. Anuri Rodriguez Astros rookie card. Uh, Starlin Castro Cubs Gold Cup card. Tony Sip with the Indians. Uh, Brian Broderick with the Washington Nationals rookie card. 
Darwin Barney with the Cubs rookie card. <clears throat> Michael Kahn, Angels rookie card. Tsuyoshi Nishoika, Twins rookie card. Roy Holiday, Philadelphia Phillies, uh, first postseason no hitter since 1956. Uh, Washington Nationals team card. Aaron Crow with the Royals rookie card. Samuel DeDuno Padres rookie card. Jamie Garcia Cardinals Gold Cup card. Uh, Marcus Thames outfielder for the Dodgers. Joe Patterson Diamondbacks rookie card. Javier Vasquez Marlins. Uh, San Francisco Giants team card. Ichiro, 10th straight 200 hit seasons. Seattle Murders. Josh Rodriguez, Pirates rookie card. Uh, Pedro Bito, Mets rookie card. Joel Zumaya, Tigers. Octavio Dutel with the Toronto Blue Jays. Fernando Abad, Astros rookie card. Brian Villarreal, Tigers rookie card. Cedric Hunter, Padres rookie card. Danny Valencia, Twins Gold Cup card. <clears throat> Fred Lewis with the with the Reds. Mike Nickius with the Mets rookie card. Uh, Mason Torin, Rangers rookie card. Josh Luke, Seattle Mariners rookie card. Jason Hayward, Gold Cup card for the Braves. Uh, Justin Fisherer, Orioles. Uh, Jose Bautista with the Toronto Blue Jays. Set team record with 54 home run season. Chris Young, pitcher for the Mets. Uh, Neftali Feliz, Gold Cup card for the Rangers. And Brad Amos. Rookie card for the Mets. Puts us to our two-fifths of the way through the set. All right, moving into stack number three. Stack number three. The one and only Dearman is in the house. How you doing there, Dearman? Thanks for popping in here. Kenley Jansen with the Dodgers. Michael Gonzalez with the Orioles. Michael Bourne with the Astros. Diamondbacks Joe Saunders. <clears throat> Carlos Guillen with the Tigers. Um, dun, dun, dun. Dan Heron with the Angels. Uh, Jean-Mar Gomez with the Indians. Adam Jones with the Orioles. Annabelle Sanchez with the Marlins. Brad Bergenson with the Orioles. Uh, J.A. Happ with the Astros. Alfonso Soriano with the Cubs. Jonathan Broxton with the Dodgers. Juan Pierre with the White Sox. Um, John Axford with the Brewers. Tyler Flowers with the White Sox. Drew Stubbs with the Reds. Matt Thornton with the White Sox. Danny Valencia with the Twins. John Lackey with the Red Sox. Mitch Meyer with the Royals. Chris Tillman with the Orioles. Brett Myers with the Astros. Uh, Brandon Beachy, rookie card for the Braves. All right, Phil Cope with the Tigers. Fernando Rodney with the California Angels. He's still around the legs. Jason Hamill with the Rockies. Uh... Randy Wells with the Cubs. Corey Hart with the Brewers. Uh, Kovani Soto with the Cubs. Johnny Gomes with the Reds. Uh, Gordon Beckham with the White Sox. Delman Young with the Twins. Josh Beckett with the Red Sox. Uh, Kyla Kayhu with the Royals. Dustin Pedroia with the Red Sox. Billy Butler with the Royals. Johnny Venters with the Braves. Ricky Nolasco with the Marlins. Kelly Johnson with the D-backs. Austin Jackson with the Tigers. 
Irvin Santana with the Angels, Troy Tulowitzki with the Rockies, Matt Laporta with the Indians, um, Blake DeWitt with the Cubs, Prince Fielder with the Brewers, J.D. Drew with the Red Sox, Luke Hachavar with the Royals, Josh Bell with the Orioles, Clint Barnes with the Astros, Jason Hayward with the Braves, Justin Verlander with the Tigers, Alberto Colaspo with the Angels, Dexter Fowler with the Rockies, Astrobal Cabrera with the Indians, Francisco Cordero with the Reds, Hiroki Kurobo Cur with the Dodgers, Jacoby Ellsbury with the Red Sox, Jason Kendall with the Royals, Jake Arietta with the Orioles, Carlos Lee with the Astros, Brian McCann with the Braves, Rick Porcello with the Tigers, uh, Jordan Walden with the Angels, Houston Street with the Rockies, Hideko Akajima with the Red Sox, Chad Billingsley with the Dodgers, Justin Masterson with the Indians, Diamondbacks, uh, Gerarda Par Para, Johnny Peralta with the Tigers, Dan Uglo with the Braves, Leo Nunez with the Marlins, Jason Donaldson with the Indians, and uh, Brandon Phillips with the Reds. Boom! Station identification break with a $2 super chat. Left behind times. He says he's off work today. See ya, murders. There we go. What's up, Dearman? Dearman, did you get the package that I sent you from Left Behind Times? You should have got it by now. I didn't think to check my my list here, but I can check it in just a second. I'm pretty sure you should have gotten that package by now. Okay. All right, I got your two entries in there left behind. You are good to go for the month of October for two more entries. Two more entries. Uh, Dearman probably just popped in to say hi and then took off. I don't know if he's still here or not left behind. Oh, okay, he did. Okay, he did post a video of the package. I will have to check that out and see what you sent him. That is pretty cool. Thanks there. Uh, thanks there, Blake. Appreciate that. <laughs> Let me get back into our stream here and finishing off the set. Well, yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Oh, that is good. So he did get the package. I mean, I, I can check my stamps.com account, but I I figured I like it when he pops in and says says hello and at least lets us know when, when, when he gets packages and stuff. It helps. So Nick Blackburn with the Twins. Uh, Sean Rodriguez with the Rays, uh, Brian Sweeney with the Athletics, uh, J.P. Arenciba, 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 Arenciba. Oh boy, let me let me think it through here. J.P. Arencibia with the Toronto Blue Jays, uh, Ross Ollendorf with the Pirates, Reggie Willits with the Angels, Buster Posey with the Giants. Cameron Mabin with the Padres. Luke French with the Seattle Mariners. Jeremy Effelt with the Giants. Um, Jason Hamill with the Rockies. Ryan Ludwig with the Padres. Mike Cameron with the Red Sox. Joe Blanton with the Phillies. There we go. Dearman, there's a Philadelphia Philly finally. <clears throat> Uh, Michael Morse. Let's see. Michael Morse with the Nationals. A.J. Burnett with the Yankees. Colby Lewis with the Tigers. Francisco Rodriguez with the Mets. Wade Davis with the Rays. Felix Hernandez with the Seattle Mariners. <laughs> uh, 
Ryan Theroyt with the Cardinals. Doug Fister with the Seattle Mariners. Jorge Posado with the Yankees. Elvis Andrews with the Rangers. Uh, Derek Barton with the A's. Taylor Teagarden with the Rangers. Ryan Dumit with the Pirates. J.J. Putz with the Diamondbacks. Tim Lincecum with the Giants. Jordan Zimmerman with the Nationals. Uh, Adam Wainwright with the Cardinals. Cole Hamels with the Philadelphia Phillies. Franklin Gutierrez with the Seattle Mariners. Mark DeRosa with the Giants. Melky Cabrera with the Royals. Uh, Everett Cabrera with the Padres. Paul Janish with the Reds. Shane Victorino with the Phillies. Mark, oh boy, Zabinski with the Toronto Blue Jays. Ivan Nova with the Yankees. Um, Scott Feldman with the Rangers. Carlos Beltran with the Mets. John Jasso with the Rays. Cliff Pennington with the A's. Travis Snyder with the Toronto Blue Jays. <clears throat> David Fries with the Cardinals. Brian Zimmerman with the Nationals. Nick Hunley with the Padres. Mark Tehan with the White Sox. Uh, Mike Fontenant with the Giants. I'm in my car at a red light. Wait, I'm in my car at red light. Car next to me looked at me when she heard Seattle Mariners. Oh, you got the window open? <laughs> uh, Brad Hopp with the Padres. Skip Shoemaker with the Cardinals. Justin Smoke with the Seattle Mariners. <laughs> Probably the car's gone by now. Pat Burrell with the Giants. Daniel Murphy with the Mets. Will Venable with the Padres. Tim Wakefield with the Red Sox. Ben Francisco with the Phillies. Jose Molina with the Toronto Blue Jays. And Jack Cust with the Seattle Mariners again. All right. Stack number three is in the books. Two more stacks to go. And then we will get into the next three packs in the left behind box. Let me move this over here. Oh, by the way there, Blake, I know you're driving and stuff. I don't know if you're still at the the light. I'll show this again. The, the nice Mickey Mantle chrome card that we got out of this box. I'm going to put this in my PC collection here. It's a reprint of a... Uh, I think it was a 1957 or something. It doesn't really say what year card it is, but it is a cool looking chrome card for sure. All right. I'll let you keep your eye on the road as you get home or you're out and about. Uh, wow, that mantle is sweet. Nice. <laughs> I thought so too. And I was glad it was in... It was kind of in the outer box. So when I took it out of this box, I was thinking there was probably a box inside the box, which I'll show you a little bit later. The mantle was like in a nice little special case here, right on top. And it says, includes this special Mickey Mantle gold chrome card exclusive to this set. So I guess when they did the complete sets here, if you ever do get the 2011 set, it's a box within a box Unless it's somebody that already took the outer box out with the Mickey Mantle. Which I just did. <laughs> but other than that, let's continue here with pack number four. Starlin Castro with the Cubs. Jason Marquis with the Nationals. Tyler Colvin with the Cubs. Edgar Renteria with the Giants. R.A. Dickey with the Mets. Seth Smith with the Rockies, jo Josh Johnson with the Marlins, uh, Miguel Montero with the D-backs, Derek Lee with the Braves, Yadier Molina with the Cardinals, uh, Garrett Jones with the Pirates, 
Uh, Jamie Moyer with the Phillies. He did a stint with the Mariners. Erasmus Ramirez with the Cubs. James Loney with the Dodgers. Roy Oswalt with the Phillies. Ibaldo Jimenez with the Rockies. Jimmy Rollins with the Phillies. Ian Kennedy with the D-backs. Chris Volson with the Marlins. Uh, Jair, Jair Jurgens with the Braves. <laughs> uh, Brendan Ryan with the Cardinals. Tyler Clippard with the Nationals. Nate McCluth with the Braves. Yes, still driving, heading home. Okay. Jason Jarmillo with the Pirates. Uh, Gabby Sanchez with the Marlins. Uh, Justin Upton with the D-backs. Jason Bay with the Mets. Todd Helton with the Rockies. Neil Walker with the Pirates. There we go. Trevor Hoffman with the Milwaukee Brewers. Yeah, he's his rookie cards way back in 93. <laughs> All right, um, Oakland Athletics team card. All right, uh, Carlos Marmol with the Cubs. Uh, Casey Blake with the Dodgers. Nick Swisher with the Yankees. Brett Wallace with the Astros. Then we got David Ortiz with the Red Sox. Then we got uh, Cabrera, Rodriguez, and Bautista for the uh, American League. All-star card. Then we've got uh, Johnson, Wainwright, and Halliday. All right, earned run leaders for the National League. Actually, this one was American League runs batted in leaders, RBI leaders for the American leg, this is the national leg. Pay attention to what's on the card, Blomdahl. Bautista, Canerco, and Cabrera, home run leaders for the American leg. All right, and then we've got uh, CC, Sabathia, Lester, and Price for the American leg wins leaders. Then we got an Ozzy Martinez rookie card for the Marlins. Then we've got a uh, American League Rookie of the Year, Naftali Feliz for the American League. Uh, Kurt Suzuki for the Athletics. Flipsy flopsy cards here. Brennan Bush with the Tigers. This always slows things down. Chipper Jones with the Atlanta Braves. Uh, Arizona D-backs team card. Colorado Rockies team card. I'm not done this game. Ryan Kalish with the Red Sox. Gonzalez Vato and Infante. 2010 National League batting average leaders for the American League. All right. Mickey Mantle, card number seven. Knew that was going to be card number seven right there. The Mickey Mantle card in this set. Right after his retirement, they had a couple years where they didn't put the card in the set. And then they put started putting it in the set as number card number seven in, the, in a, a, quite a few of the Topps baseball card sets here. Lucas May, rookie card for the Royals. Omar Vizquel with the White Sox. Aaron Harang with the Reds. Nelson Cruz with the... Texas Rangers. All right. Uh, Pedro Siraco with the Pirates. Rookie card. Um, Ryan Dempster with the Cubs. Jeff Kippinger with the Astros. Uh, Zach Duke with the Pirates. David Eckstein with the Padres. Hernandez, Buschholz, and Price, American League earned run average leaders. Ichiro, outfielder for, let me think on this one. Oh, yeah, the Seattle Mariners. <laughs> All right, Daniel Delasco with the Cardinals rookie card. Chase Headley with the Padres. 
um, Hunter Pence with the Astros, Tim Hudson with the Braves, Maglio Ordonez with the Tigers, uh, Atlanta Braves team card, Roy Holiday with the National League Cy Young Award winner, uh, Cincinnati Reds team card, um, Hamilton Cabrera and Maurer, 2010 American League batting average leaders, Russell Martin with the Dodgers, um, Randy Wolf with the Brewers, David Wright with the Mets, Justin Morneau with the Twins, David Price with the Rays, um, Araldus Chapman, there we go, Araldus Chapman, Cincinnati Reds rookie card for adult Araldus Chapman, um, Edinson Vasquez with the Reds, um, Bronson Arroyo with the Reds, Cleveland Indians team card, take half of this one here, uh, Pujols, Dunn, and Votto, National League home run leaders, Michael Brantley with the Indians, Emilio Bonifacio with the Mar with the Marlins, <laughs> White Sox team card, um, James McDonald with the Pirates, um, Chris Carpenter with the Cardinals, Peter Borjos with the Angels, um, Chris Perez with the Indians. Holiday, Wainwright, and Imanez, National League wins leaders. Um, Pujols, Gonzalez, and Votto, National League runs batted in leaders. Rick Ankio with the Braves. Carl Pavano with the Twins. Here we go. Alex Rodriguez, youngest ever to 600 home runs. New York Yankees. Corey Luke. With the Padres, rookie card. Greg Gree and Fonte with the White Sox, rookie card. Jim Thome, number eight all time in home runs with the Twins. Joey Votto, 2010 National League MVP. Yonder Alonso, rookie card for the Reds. Kyle Drabeck, rookie card for the Toronto Blue Jays. New York Mets, team card. Uh, Neil Walker, Gold Cup card for the Pirates. Uh, Baltimore Orioles team card. Dylan Gee, rookie card for the Mets. Brent Morrell, rookie card for the White Sox. Steven Strasburg, Gold Cup card for the Nationals. Ubaldo Jimenez, uh, most single season wins in franchise history for the Rockies. Chris Sale, rookie card. For the White Sox, Mark Trumbo, rookie card for the Angels, Chicago Cubs team card, Gary Sanchez, Gold Cup card for the Marlins, and Brian Bogusovic with the Astros rookie card. Last part of the fourth stack, Desmond Jennings, rookie card for the Rays, Hank Conger, rookie card for the Angels, David Price, most single season wins in franchise history for the Tampa Bay Rays Pedro Alvarez with the Pirates Darren Ford rookie card for the Giants Ben Revere rookie card for the Twins Jeremy Jeffress rookie card for the Brewers Boston Red Sox team card Buster Posey 2010 rookie of the year award Trevor Hoffman, first ever with 600 saves. Hall of Famer for the Brewers. Scott Cousins, rookie card for the Marlins. Jake McGee, rookie card for the Rays. Uh, Lars Anderson, rookie card for the Red Sox. Angels, team card. Buster Posey, gold cup card for the Giants. Josh Hamilton, 2010 American League MVP. Brett Sink Bell, rookie card for the Marlins. Jose Sita, rookie card for the Marlins. San Diego Padres team card. Mike Stanton, gold cup card for the Marlins. 
Lucas Duda, rookie card for the Mets. Freddie Freeman, rookie card for the Braves. Brandon Snyder, rookie card for the Orioles. Jeremy Heckelson with the Rays. Tampa Bay Rays team card. Greg Hallman, rookie card for the Seattle Mariners. Brian Dusing with the Twins. Milwaukee Brewers team card. Felix Hernandez, 2010 American Lake Cy Young Award winner. And Matt Lundstrom, pitcher for the Astros. Rounds out the last part of our fourth stack. One more stack to go here in the 2011 baseball card set. As we continue through the box here. Last stack. And then we get into left behinds packs. Maybe he'll be maybe he'll be home by by the time I get through this stack. <clears throat> All right, we are two and a half hours into this stream. Carlos Santana, Cleveland Indians, uh, Clayton Kershaw with the Dodgers, uh, Lyle Overs Overbay with the Tampa Bay Rays. No, the Toronto Blue Jays. Tampa Bay Rays. I did it again. Here's the Rays. Carlos Pena with the Rays. Michael Saunders with the Seattle Mariners. Brett Anderson with the A's. Um, CC Sabathia with the Yankees. Tory Hunter with the Angels. Koji Uhara with the Royals. Uh, Kevin Correa. Correa. How do you say that? Quote, C O R R E I A Korea. <laughs> Almost says, sounds like Kevin Korea. <laughs> That's probably how you say it, like you say Korea, the country with the Padres. Alexi Ramirez with the White Sox. Kevin Kuzminoff with the A's. Brandon Inge with the Tigers. Shin Su Chu with the Indians. Freddie Sanchez with the Giants. Uh, Aaron Hill with the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, Ted Lilly with the Dodgers, Julio Borbon with the Rangers, Matt Joyce with the Rays, Gio Gonzalez with the uh, A's, Derek Jeter with the Yankees, Hall of Fame, new Hall of Famer, Eric Ibar with the Athletics, with the A's, Adrian Beldre with the Red Sox, Felix Pye with the Orioles, Kevin Slowey with the Twins, Uniski Bentoncourt with the Royals. AJ Pierzynski with the White Sox. Uh, Jorvit Tirialba with the Padres. John Buck with the Toronto Blue Jays. Cliff Lee with the Rangers. Jack Wilson with the Seattle Mariners. All right, he says he just got home. All right, I'll give you a chance. We still got a few more cards to go through. You can get into your relaxation mode or cord so card sorting mode, whichever one you're switching into. Kerry Wood with the Yankees. Clay Bullschultz with the Red Sox. Coco Crisp with the Athletics. Get into the next fourth of our stack here. Uh, Matt Caps with the Twins. Kevin Millwood with the Orioles. Uh, Zach Grinke with the Royals. Heath Bell with the Padres. Paul Canerco with the White Sox. Christian Guzman with the, the Rangers. Uh, James Shields with the Rays. Milton Bradley with the Seattle Mariners. Brett Gardner with the Yankees. Jeremy Bonderman with the Detroit Tigers. John Lester with the Red Sox. Brian Fuentes with the Twins. Uh, Jeremy Guthrie with the Orioles, Edwin Encarnacion with the Toronto Blue Jays, Vincent Padilla with the Dodgers, Michael Kudger with the Twins, Howie Kendrick with the Angels, uh, Mike Lowell with the Red Sox, Andrew Bailey with the A's, Mariano Rivera with the Yankees, Kyle Davis with the Royals, Josh Tomlin with the Indians, Evan Meek with the Pirates, Chris Narvison with the Brewers, Melvin Morrow with the Rockies, John Neese with the Mets, Ian Desmond with the Nationals, Barry Zito with the Giants, uh, 
Gregor Blanco with the Royals, Andrew Kashner with the Cubs, and Ricky Weeks with the Brewers. One more half a stack to go here to finish off the box. And then after that comes the sorting process before next Wednesday's video. <laughs> Let me uh, do a refresh on the chat real quick here. So I know where I left off. Left behind getting home. <laughs> All right, two more halves to go for this last stack in the 2011 set. Um, Adam Dunn with the Nationals. <clears throat> Carlos Silva with the Cubs. Jonathan Sanchez with the Giants. Um, Steven Strasburg with the Nationals. Adrian Ether with the Dodgers. Carlos Ruiz with the Phillies. Mike Stanton with the Marlins. Chris Young with the D-backs. Omar Infante with the Braves. Albert Pujols with the Cardinals. Johnny Cuto with the Reds. Uh, Ronnie Cedeno with the Pirates. Ryan Braun with the Brewers. Jamie Garcia with the Cardinals. Martin Prado with the Braves. Uh, Ike Davis with the Mets. Uh, Daniel Hudson with the D-backs. Uh, Brad Lidge with the Phillies. Andres Torres with the Giants. David Ardsma with the Seattle Mariners. Tom Gorzalini with the Cubs. Uh, Chris Johnson with the Astros. Jonathan Lucroy with the Brewers. Um, Arthur Rhodes with the Reds. Jay Bruce with the Reds. Yunel Escobar with the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, Marlon Bird with the Cubs, Jose Contreras with the Phillies, Aaron Cook with the Rockies, Jason Wirth with the Phillies, Chris Coughlin with the Marlins, uh, Stephen Drew with the D-backs, Paul Mahome with the Pirates, uh, Billy Wagner with the Braves, uh, Michael Oliva with the Rockies, Johan Santana with the Mets, and Placidio Placido Polanco with the Phillies. Last part of the box. Eric Young Jr. with the Rockies. Clay Hensley with the Marlins. John Lannon with the Nationals. Ryan Perry with the Tigers. Scott Rowland with the Reds. Carlos Gomez with the Brewers. Mike Aviles Av with the Royals. Raymond Hernandez with the Reds. Uh, Marco Scutaro with the Red Sox, Roger Bernardina with the Nationals, Brian Wilson with the Giants, Julius Chaikin with the Rockies, Chase Utley with the Phillies, Carlos Gonzalez with the Rockies, uh, Angel Pagan with the Mets, Pedro Feliz with the Cardinals, Derek Lowe with the Braves, Juan Gutierrez with the Diamondbacks, Xavier Nade with the Cubs. Um, Alcides Escobar with the Brewers. Wandy Rodriguez with the Astros. Freddy Garcia with the White Sox. Joey Votto with the Reds. Jose Guillen with the Giants. Josh Willingham with the Nationals. Roy Holiday with the Phillies. Manny Ramirez with the White Sox. Ian Stewart with the Rockies. Josh Tule Foley with the Mets, Hanley Ramirez with the Marlins, Jake Westerbrook with the Cardinals, Alex Gonzalez with the Braves, John Jay with the Cardinals, and Andrew McCutcheon is the last card with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Whew, that was a handful, and we got done just before 1 o'clock. So we are doing good. We've got about 20 minutes to go before I get to my three-hour mark. And I'm only like an hour over my lunch break. <laughs> but that's okay. I will survive. That's what they say, right? I will survive. All right. All the cards are back in the box. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Going to close the box up. Set it aside 
for the sorting process for putting the cards in order from 1 to 660. Because it says the last card is 660. So they did not skip a card in this set. So let me put this aside here for putting in order. Let me get some, some of my card stands out here as we go into the next part. Part number, what is this? Seven, part seven. For our Left Behind Mystery Packs. Repacks. There we go. Let me get my box out here open up my box and we'll pull out the next the next um, six packs so let's see I gotta figure out how to do let's see we'll do this one and I'm gonna do ones that have oh wait here we go oh no I'll just take this one and this one there we go all right, next three packs in the box. Let me set this off to the side here. Oh boy, here we go. Hope you pull fire. All right, we got to do our. We have fun. We have fun opening these. I, I can't. You you've watched me open them. We got to we got to get some votes now. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I'm gonna say this one's the Mickey Mantle. <laughs> Not that there's a Mickey Mantle inside the pack. But this will be, you got to vote for either Mickey Mandel or the Dodgers that just won the World Series. Or, um, I don't know, I'm going to say this is Tom Seaver. So we got the Mickey Mantle, the Dodgers, or Tom Seaver. I don't know if it says Tom Seaver or not, but I'm sticking with it. So we got to do votes. We got four people. This is going to be difficult. So... Whichever one gets picked first will be the first pack we open. Because there's not a lot of people in here watching. It might be just me and you, Lepine. <laughs> but, uh, oh, you want me to do the Mickey Mantle first? Alright, so this one here will be first. Do Mickey first. Oh, okay. Tom Seaver. You probably know how you pack these. Tom Seaver, uh, second. And we'll do the Dodgers last, huh? Okay, we'll do the Dodgers last. Okay, so this will be number three. This will be number two. And I don't know, that th this one here has some weight to it. <laughs> and we'll do, uh, you said to do Mickey Mantle first, right? I like that. He's helping me out here. Mickey Mantle first. Okay. It might be just me and you. There's just four people watching. But we do have four thumbs up. If you haven't given me a thumbs up, thumbs up, thummies up, thummies up for me. I really don't remember how I packed it. Laugh out loud. It's a surprise. Okay. No, that that is perfectly fine. It's been fun opening up these packs there, left behind. It has been fun. And nothing left in the bag there. Or in the wrapper, I should say. <clears throat> oh my word, this is smoke and heat. I don't think I've seen this car before. This is our Randy Johnson. So Ken Griffey Jr. goes here. Cal Ripken Jr. goes here. My Seattle Mariners go here. And the Hall of Famers go here. All other stuff just lays down later. <laughs> but we got our Randy Johnson smoke and heat. 11 up 12 subset card. Coolness there. We got a Cal Ripken Jr. There we go, Cal Ripken Jr. This is an, a younger card of him. What year is this one? Ooh, it's got his minor league stats on it, so it's not too old. His, uh, his rookie year was 1981. So, or no, no, 82 is his rookie year. He only played a partial year there. Because he only played 22 games. So his first rook, his rookie year is 1982. That's one, two, three, four. This is fifth year card. That's pretty cool. I like that one. And then next we got a league leaders, Ken Griffey Jr. with the Seattle Mariners. And then we got a 
Ichiro, a Brett Boone, and an Alex Rodriguez. Even though Alex was with us, just happened to be Brett Boone, Ichiro, and Alex with the Rangers. But that's okay. That goes with my Seattle Mariners cards. Because it's got a Ichiro card on there. That's an Ichiro Hall of Famer to be. We got a rainbow foil for 2019. A rainbow foil for the Seattle Mariners. Braden Bishop rookie card. I like that one too. Felix Hernandez. There we go. A Felix Hernandez. Turkey red card from... 2010. 2000, I'd have to go back. I might have to go back now and start collecting turkey red cards. <laughs> They've done that for quite a few years now, huh? They've got 2019 sets and 2020 sets. Might have to work my way back in time. <laughs> no, no more new collecting, Don, until you get rid of all this old stuff. Um, so... Jay Buner, Seattle Mariners, Jay Brun Jay J Bone, Mitch Hanniger. There we go. A Mitch Hanniger Optic Optic card. The second year card. Mitch Hanniger. Awesome. Then we have a Manny Trio. Manny Trio. Vintage card here. This is a 1983 tops 1983 this is a 1985 uh, Bob Kepper Knepper left hand pitcher all star for the Astros 1985 we've got a oh a relic this is a genuine Topps Allen Ginter relic card that features memorabilia from Noah Syndergaard. Oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, Noah Syndergaard patch relic. Uh, Noah Syndergaard patch relic. Awesomeness. Uh, Gliber Torres with the New York Yankees. Here, let me pick these up and go through these this, this way. Let's see. Let's put the... I'll put the Noah Syndergaard right there. This or the... The... Vintage cards, I'll call them. <laughs> they are old. They're older than most people on my channel, except for me. <clears throat> Gliber Torres with the Yankees. 2020 Gliber Torres card. And a Shane Bieber... Shane Bieber, 2020, Bowman, a Ronald Acuna Jr. with the Atlanta Braves Bowman Platinum card, 2019, and a Lou Gehrig says, a Lou Gehrig says, Hall of Famer Lou Gehrig. And Andre Dawson. Andre Dawson. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, Diamond King for Andre Dawson. Hall of Famer, 1985. Let's leave the Lou Gehrig in, in front there. There we go. Pack number one is in the books. All right. Okay, next up to bat is, I'll say it's Tom Seaver. I don't know for sure, but sounds good. And then we'll do the Dodger last. Let's see. Let me see if I can see the rest of the article here. See if I guessed that one right. Yeah, it looks like it says Tom Seaver on there. I'm pretty sure it says Tom Seaver. Boom! There we go. King Griffey Jr. Checklist 96 Clear. King Griffey Jr. Another King Griffey Jr. with the Cincinnati Reds. An impact card from what year is this one? 2000. 2000. 2000. Fle is this Fleer product? Fleer Impact. 
Ken Griffey Jr. And we've got a Cal Ripken Jr. with the Baltimore Orioles. This is 1993 tops. And a franchise Cal Ripken Jr. Baltimore Orioles score 1991. There we go. My two two big PCs. I won't ring the bell for everything. <laughs> but Edgar Martinez, Hall of Famer with the Seattle Mariners. And then next we've got Future Stars, Rayonis Elias, Gold Cup card. For the Seattle Mariners, 2015 tops. Then we got, oh, how appropriate for me to get this Felix Hernandez today. Now I can put this one in my, in my Felix Hernandez PC. I can't take the one out of my set box. I'd like to. If I had a, a $400 card in there, I'd probably consider doing it. <laughs> break it out of the set <laughs> bust up the set and then use the card for something else down the road <laughs> but Felix Hernandez from the 2011 2011 tops awesome there we just reviewed that whole set and now I got to get to add that one into my Felix Hernandez PC Mitch Hanniger tops Gallagher Mitch Hanniger I wish they wouldn't have traded Mitch away. 2019 Tops Gallery, Mitch Henniger. Then we've got the Alex Rodriguez when he played for the Seattle Mariners. Hey Rod. Oh my word, we got a we got a oh my awesomeness. We got us a hit. We got us a shed long Gypsy Queen, congratulations. You have just received a Gypsy Queen autograph card issued by 2020 Tops Gypsy Queen. 99 out of 150 autograph for Shed Long. I do not have a Shed Long autograph, and now I do. I don't believe I do. I gotta go through and one of these days I gotta sort all my Seattle Mariner cards. But this one will get top loaded. That's for sure. Uh, let me get a... Not that one. Get a halfway decent top... Okay, that one's good. That's one. That one's good. This will go into my... My short prints, serialized, or relic cards for Seattle Mariners. Boom. Shed long. Boom, boom, boom. Short print card for Shed Long. Thank you there, left by hand. That is an awesome card to add to my special Seattle Mariner cards. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now we got a George Brett and a Bill Buckner. A Bill Buckner and a George Brett. George Brett is definitely a Hall of Famer. Didn't think Bill Buckner was, but that's okay. And then, is this a Ted Williams card, or is this a Melvin Thomas Ott? Melvin Thomas Ott. Ott is a Hall of Famer, that's for sure. Thought so. Just had to verify just to make sure. Greg Maddox with the Atlanta Braves. Greg Maddox. Hall of Famer, of course. Oh, my word. Tom Glavin. Is that... Okay, I'm trying to think if that's his rookie card. Is this Tom Glavin's first or second year card? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head on this one. Oh, you pulled that shed long. Second year card for Glavin. Okay. So he'll go into my Hall of Famers there. Second year card. I was thinking that wasn't, didn't look like the rookies that I have of Tom Glavin. So second year card. Thank you there, Lepine. Appreciate that. <clears throat> and then, of course, Juan Soto. 
2020. 2020 tops. That's got to go into my 2020 set for now. I don't know. If, I don't think I've got the complete set, but I'm not necessarily working on it. Eventually, I will probably try to get the complete set. But Juan Soto, awesome card there. 85 throwbacks, and now for our final pack of the day. And we are almost at the three-hour mark. So let's go with the Dodger, the Dodger sweetness here. In honor, we'll do this, we did this one last in honor of being the last. Oh, now I see why this one's heavy. It does have something in here. But it's on the bottom of the stack, that's for sure. Oh my word, I don't think I have this one. I don't think I have this Ken Griffey here. I'm going to set these down just like this as I go through these. Oh, let me turn this down just a little bit more there. Get the top of the cards there still blown off. Scooch it up just a hair more. But, um... There we go. I like this one. Oh my. It's a little bit thicker cardstock, but I like that. United States of America, Pennsylvania. Ken Griffey Jr. I don't believe I've got this one in my Ken Griffey Jr. collection. But I do now, Blombo. I do now. Okay. I'm going to hold these like this for now. <clears throat> oh, Ken Griffey Jr. <coughs> <coughs> Hold on a second, I gotta get a sip of water. I gotta sip, get a sip of water. I'm glad tomorrow I don't have to do as much talking with my 30 minute lecture I get to, to highlight with you guys. <clears throat> okay, so Cal Ripken Jr. gets a bell ringer there, Mr. Blue Eye. Mr. Blue Eye, Cal oh my word, that's an awesome card there too, I, I like this one, that's for sure, Franchise History, I don't think I have this version, but I have plenty of different cards that have the 2131 on them, that is awesome, Cal Ripken Jr., Cal Ripken Jr., there's a Jay Bruner Gold Cup card for the Seattle Mariners. All right, Donnie Walton with the Seattle Mariners. Oh, this is a rookie card for Donnie Walton, too, isn't it? My word. Donnie Walton's rookie card. That's an up-and-coming Mariner there. Hopefully we'll hang on to him if we still have him. I'll double-check and check into that one, that's for sure. Um, hold on a second. Let me get a... just going to put it in one of these just as a reminder for me to not put it in with my regular cards. For the Seattle Mariners. Make that another... Top loaded card there, rookie card for Donnie Walton. Oh yeah, I had to get me a Chris Sable. A Chris Sable rookie card, huh? <laughs> a Chris Sable rookie card. We've got an old Tony Perez third baseman. My word. This is a 1970 tops. Pretty cool. I can find a use for that one, that's for sure. And then what do we got here? We've got, oh, no way. Oh, my word. <laughs> uh, Philadelphia Phillies, Danny Ozark, manager for, and then what year is this one? That's, I'm trying to think. Oh, there we go. 1977 tops for the Philadelphia Phillies. Like that vintage card here, but look at this. Look at this. I've got an Ichiro milestone career hit number 2,332 single, one of one. You guys see that? 
an official game card, one of one. <clears throat> Tells you his career hit number 2,332. He got a single on June 26, 2011, Seattle versus Florida, opposing pitcher Annabelle Sanchez. These were redemption cards back in the day. These were used, of course, most of them didn't didn't trade their cards in. Why would you? You got a one one baseball card. It's the only one of its type for that specific hit out of this set. But it was part of some type of a honus bonus uh, rules. But I like the fact that it's a it's a one of one. That's the main thing that I like out of this one. Even though it's not as as rare a one of one card, it is a one of one card. It says it right there. One of one. <laughs> a one of one Ichiro. I like that one. I like that one a lot. Thank you there, Left Behind. It's funny because uh, I was just searching on eBay and found something similar to this. And that's why when I saw one of these, I'm like, oh my word, what on earth? And then, let's see, what do we got here? I'm going to do this one because I see what that one is right there. <clears throat> and let's see, opening day, Seattle Mariners. From 2020, opening day, Seattle Mariners. I can add this one into my collection now instead of having it in my baseball card set. But, lo and behold, guess what just completed my commemorative coin set? My Jesus Lazardo Oakland Athletics rookie card for Jesus Lazardo. Awesomeness. And I know somebody else on here that would <laughs> like this. Le Jesus Lazardo also. That completed it. Very cool. <laughs> yes. I think I remember a while back you said maybe you were going to be sending it. So I kind of held off on trying to get one for now. And now... Before the end of the year, I'll be able to highlight my commemorative coin set. That is awesome. I'll have to get this into one of the top loaders. Let me see if I can pull off this tape here. Yep, okay, good. I can probably leave it in this one. Um, let me save the blue tape here for now. And thank you, Left Behind, for completing my set. Jesus Lizardo. I did take it off my listing on my the ones I was trying to find there because I knew I kept certain notes on different ones that said they were going to be sending me stuff. And boom. Appreciate that one left behind. I that will find a prominent home for sure in my commemorative coin for 2020 set. So I have the complete rookie card med, uh, medallion set, and then the commemorative coin set. Now that I have Jesus Losardo. Appreciate that very much there, Blake. Much, much appreciated. <clears throat> so without further ado, we did go just over the three-hour mark. Do appreciate that. Appreciate everybody hanging out with me. Looked like we have five people here. That was fun. Glad you liked them. Oh, no, I like all the cards that are here. I can't wait to finish going through the whole box. I'm excited to see what else might be hiding in there. I mean, I got a shed long autograph. Um, I got a shed long autograph. I got a, a Donnie Walton. Believe it or not, 
my my grandparents called me Donnie, not Don, not Donnie Walton, of course, <laughs> but Donnie. Um, only good close friends can call me Donnie. I prefer Don or Donald. <clears throat> but um, that is awesome. Noah Syndergaard. Probably have a home for that one. Some of these cards. This one here, I gotta check to see if I've got that in my um, 85 throwback set for Tops 2020. If not, I will find homes for some of this stuff later down the road. I do like the the Cal Ripken cards here. One, two, three, four, five more cards to put into my separation there for Mm, excuse me. Cal Ripken Jr. Got some Hall of Famer cards here. Tom Glavin, uh, Greg Maddox, uh, Mel Ott, George Brett, Lou Gehrig, and Andre Dawson. So more cards for my Hall of Fame sorting process. Bunch of Seattle Mariners. I won't highlight all of those at the moment. Oh, where did I put my Ichiro 101? Where did I set that one? Did I? Oh, there we go. There's the that I should I should move that in front of the auto, the one of one. I'll get that in a top loader. I think I got to open up another package to get a nice, crisp, top loader for that or not top loader, but a, a yeah top loader for that one. So, and then the Noah Syndergaard here, some vintage cards down here. I like the mix of vintage and stuff. I do like that there, left line. Then this one, and then the Ken Griffey Juniors. Uh, one, two, three, four. This one I got to get probably penny sleeve for now. But this will go in my no number grouping. Because I don't think that fine, fine print there is a number. Curious as to what the words say around the side there. They look like they are words. I'll have to break out my magnifying glasses and see if I can read that. <clears throat> I don't know if they did this as a state set. And this, he's Pennsylvania. I will have to check this out, but it does say something on the uh, exterior edge of the card. But I need a better magnification than the one I'm using right now. That is... Hope you didn't have it. No, you do. I, I do not think... I do not believe I have this card. That's for sure there, left behind. Matter of fact, right now I want to put it in a penny sleeve and I will put it in a thicker card holder because I think there's more to this card than meets the eye. I think there is more to this card than meets the eye. And that's what I'm always intrigued about. That's for sure. Oh no, low battery mode. Good thing I'm done. <clears throat> but that's okay. Um, I will be getting ready to wrap up soon. It says, 49 years to the day after Stan Musial was born. And Donora, and Donora Jr. was born in the same Pennsylvania town. The two share not only a birthday and hometown, but a spot among the all-time Keystone Stay Greats. No Pennsylvanian has hit more Major League home runs than Griffey, who has contributed 10 Gold Glove Awards, four Homer titles, and a 1997 American Lake MVP honor to this state's legacy. But yeah, there is something that's written on the exterior here, but I'll have to work on getting that magnified so I can read it better. But that is awesome. I like this. US 38. I think the US 38 is state number 38. Well, no, it can't be state number 38. It's probably just card number 38. I'm pretty sure they did probably at least a 50-card set on this one, I'm thinking. 
but that is definitely awesome there and then of course these other three ken griffey juniors uh, this one's a checklist card that's okay checklist cards count too i like checklist cards probably somewhere on there it might even say ken griffey jr it might not no this is uh yeah nope just has griffey on the front there checklist but it does say ken griffey jr on the front and it is a card two of ten so that's how i kind of sort things and then this one is another two of ten oh well, that's pretty cool they're both two of ten cards a two of ten checklist a two of ten um um, a league leader card set <laughs> and a card number 100 but I do like these I like all these cards there but this one definitely has more to what you can see here because I could I could tell there was writing it's just a matter of getting it magnifying to magnified to see what the complete writing is around the edge of the card I'm always intrigued by those type of things but I do like that card a lot that'll definitely get top loaded and I gotta get a thicker one I think not too thick a one but not too thin a one I just oh wait I think I ha might have one here hold on a second yes I do have one um, that's... let's see I think it might go in this one for now Yep, it'll go right in there. <clears throat> I did have one sneaking in my sleeve on the side. Interested in what it says around the edge. Thanks for a great stream. No problem. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready to wrap things up, go down and have some lunch, and then sort some more cards. I got lots of work to do today. And then church tonight. So let me get my... <clears throat> ball cap on my shiny my shiny little skull here turn the camera around so you guys can see me and sign off for today so there you go this has been Donald Blondahl Hall of Fame veteran sports cards and collectibles having been live to you this Wednesday morning slash afternoon it is 1 30 in the afternoon now um Appreciate you being here left behind. Appreciate you jumping in on board with me. Uh, it was fun today. A little bit longer stream, but it always ends up longer on Wednesdays with the set previews. So other than that, you all have a great and wonderful day. We will see you around the channels. And it's been a blessing to just uh, hang out with everybody today. So take care. Lord bless you. And we will see you around the channels. Bye for now.